listening to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. Back you are, and away we go. Welcome back to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. Roof, I don't know if you know this. Oh, I it's know it. It's the only one that brings the firehouse kitchen table to well, you. I don't know about that. Listen, I want to tell you this. Me, I don't know about that. There's a lot of guys out there saying they do, but let me give you this little. I don't know. You ready for this? Can you get good pizza in Florida? No, you can't. You know why? Because you need the right ingredients. You can call it pizza. I don't give a shit what you call it. You call it, but it's not really pizza. You could say you got the only firehouse kitchen table, but you really don't because you don't have the right ingredients. You don't have this right here. So keep saying that you're the only podcast. How about if you get the guy on the podcast the day before we get him on the podcast? How about that? Oh, oh that oh. hurts. That one hurts. That's a, <laughs> that's a hiney buster. That one hurts. I think that we're bleeding one. on that one. I think that if you see me, if you see me moving around in my seat, my, my hiney is a little sore from that one. Uh, so I know, yeah, I, I, know, think, I know somebody well, else's hiney who's a little sore. Who's that? Oh. <laughs> who's that? Well, let, let, let's just say I, I, I was at. Uh, I just want to say I was in Harrisburg this week, and it was great. And uh, yeah, I met a lot of people. I actually almost I, I ran into uh, I ran into Jeremy. Oh, he set me up. Here we go. Okay. National Fire Radio. I did. He was. Oh, uh, uh, oh he might... no! It's not National Fire Radio. It's uh, I don't go to NFR, which means I don't go to No Fire Radio. That's, oh, but he I, did. I, he did beat well, you to the punch, but. So oh, he's got a he, picture he, of his cat. <laughs> oh, what is that? Hey, Coops, what happened? You just kind of you ran right into him. I don't know what happened. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let me I mean, just slide in here before. Jeremy you. was already there, and you just you just slid into home plate. Into home plate. I don't know what happened. Wow. Oh, wow, man. man. You know, if I had if I had feelings, that I would be hurt right now. Take I that would in. Be very hurt. <sighs> yeah. That guy's in there. He gave me he really the old. Well, I didn't know you guys were having him on tonight. I'm like, dude, are you? Are you? That's your boy. Yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> yeah, it's the I don't go to NFR. It's I don't go to no fire radio. So that's what we're gonna call him. And the other guy is uh, pin the cue on a donkey. The that's guy goes what, what? He doesn't. I don't know. Doing it. I don't know if he does, but uh, that's all I, I gotta say about that. Right. So so listen, we have a, a blockbuster guest, bro. This guy. Gives and gives back to the fire service. He don't even have to, bro. You know, he's a big Hollywood guy. You'll see. I'll butter him up when he comes in here. So yeah, he's got listen, the escarols, so, right, Coom? Oh man, he's got the scuttles falling out of his pocket all over the place. So listen for uh, for the three. He, he gave got, me so the for the three you guys that actually watch Jeremy's show, don't ruin it for the other couple of thousand <laughs> in our show tonight. All right. <laughs> <laughs> don't ruin it for the few thousand Why watching live tonight. Why are you so All right. Angry? Don't get angry. <laughs> I'm not angry. I'm not angry. All right, uh, guys, let's move forward. Come on, quickly. We All right, right, here we go. Here we go. Let's start in here. Let's hear from, all, from people at Armor Tough. Armor Tough interlocking floor tiles are the best choice to replace new or aging, stained or cracked concrete or epoxy floors. Here's why. Armor Tough tiles come with a lifetime warranty and are usually installed in one or two days, depending on the size of your station, with virtually no disruption in daily operation. Armor Tough interlocking tiles are guaranteed from chipping, cracking, peeling, breaking, or staining. Once installed, the tiles are non skid and non slip and meet the ADA standards for the friction coefficient. The tiles are stain resistant and impervious to any chemicals or volatiles that are used in the fire service. Once installed, your floor will be easy to clean with just soap and water. Install an Armor Tough tile floor in your apparatus bays, offices, training rooms, workshops, exercise rooms, kitchens, banquet halls, or any other room in your station. Call Vince today for a no obligation quote at 908-917-7697. Why install a breakable epoxy floor that will need replacing in five to 10 years when you could have a floor that will last a lifetime? Drop a halogen on an Armor Tough floor and you won't see any damage. Don't try this with concrete or epoxy. Join the hundreds of career and volunteer fire departments nationwide who have chosen an Armor Tough interlocking tile floor. Armor Tough interlocking tiles are half the price of epoxy and will last a lifetime without issue. Again, call Vince today for a no obligation quote at 908 
917-716-7697. You ran it to Vince down there, right? I did. Nice. Took him out to dinner. He picked I you did. up in his Porsche. He picked me nice. up in his Porsche. He must be he doing did. all right. Must be selling a lot of floors. <laughs> Hopefully, going to have to give the it. family price. You know what I mean? You gotta all right, Gonzo, so quickly. Let's do ours quickly, quickly, quickly. Here we go. If you're looking for a gift for that special firefighter in your life, then head on over to GettingSaltyApparel.com. Yes, GettingSaltyApparel.com. What do we have? Well, we carry hand-drawn original T-shirts, glassware such as mugs, shot glasses, pint glasses, engraved Arctic cooler cups, and much, much more. There's also a full line of firefighter tool bottle openers like Halligan's, nozzles, and wine bottle opener accesses too. And if you're a cigar smoker, congratulations! We have partner saw cigar cutters and humidors. Think we're done? Far from it. We got toiletry, gear bags, poozies, a full line of hats, decals, sweatshirts, and once again, so much more. We can also personalize most of these products. And if you want discounts, hey, you've come to the right place. We got discounts on large orders for promotion dinners, weddings, as well as installation dinners. Just head on over to GettingSaltyApparel.com. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. It's time for, before we bring in uh, Mr. Burke, it's time for a new segment on the show. It'll be very brief. Uh, so, uh, Gonzo, throw that out there, bro. Time for me, buddy. I had an error. It's on my end. What? Say that one more time for me. I didn't miss what you what? said. What? <laughs> I said it's a new throw? segment we'll be throwing up here right now. But gods, it's your cue. Ta-da! And away we go! <laughs> Unshy and unfiltered, ladies and gentlemen, this is Coob's Ring. Yes, this is a rant. This will be really quick. So I don't know if you guys know about the live burn that went out in Banff, uh, Canada. So it was a prescribed burn highlighted on the agenda of a women's firefighting conference held to promote diversity and inclusion in a male-dominated field. It didn't go so well. Accidentally setting Banff National Park ablaze wasn't part of the plan. The prescribed burn was carried out in compound meadows adjacent to the Banff town site. It raged out of control Wednesday, forcing a temporary evacuation of horses from the Banff Light Horse Association and hundreds of area residents and tourists in the Rocky Mountain Resort. I'll make this really brief. So me and Roof, we say it all the time. I don't give a shit what you are. I don't give a shit if you're a man. I don't give a shit if you're a woman. I don't give a shit what color you are. I don't give a shit what you got between your legs. Just do the goddamn job. That's all we're saying. If you could do the job, then you're just a firefighter. You don't have to be a male firefighter. You don't have to be a female firefighter. You don't have to be an Italian firefighter. You don't have to be a firefighter with a big, fat, crooked nose. You can just be a firefighter, bro. That's all I'm asking for. Can we stop putting people in boxes and just do the goddamn job? And burn it down buildings. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's all I got to say about Maybe. that. That's it. And that's Good Coobs' rant. rant. Thank you. Good. That's Coobs' right. rant for today. Done. All right. You want to bring that's him good. in, Roof? Let me get sure. my, let right. me get my, uh, uh, my seat pillow because my butt hurt a little bit. Let me, all right. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, Come to the stage, go. Captain Bobby Burke. Whoa, there he is. He's like, nice. what am I doing here? Why am I here? <laughs> There's no doubt he's saying that. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, Captain Burke. Uh, before we get started, talking about your dual career here, let's get uh, patriotic, uh, Gonzo. Yes. yes, sir. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the
Amen. Excellent. Well, like I said before, thank you for coming on the show. Even after you saw the show, Mr. Burke, I appreciate it. <laughs> well, that speaks to what an honor it is to be here. <laughs> I know, I mean, and I mean He's that. good. I, I don't know if he's acting. I know. I mean, he's a good actor, bro. He's a great actor. I mean that great actor. Great I've actor. seen some of the, uh, the people you've had on the show, and it, it is an honor beyond uh, anything that I could uh, uh, ask for. So I appreciate being here. Well, let's talk about how you have the time to do two careers. How do you have time to be a volley captain, a firefighter? And, I mean, I, I'm looking over some of the films you've been, been in. And they're, they're like, I didn't even know you were in half of these. Uh, how did you even start that? First? How, how did you even start? I mean, let's talk about how, uh, the beginning. I know you, you're first generation. Uh, your dad was from Galway, Ireland. So give us the early. You grew up in Manhattan somewhere, I think. I was in Manhattan until we. I was a child. I was a child. Uh, we right. lived in Washington Heights. My parents emigrated from Ireland. Uh, they were in their thirties. Um, you know, my father worked in the refrigeration warehouses on the west side of Manhattan. He was a bartender. He was the super of our building. <clears throat> so, um, you know, it was. It was. Uh, we didn't know any better. We we were happy. Uh, uh, not much money and stuff like that. So then my father got a job as a. Um, well, a priest who in our family knew our situation and said to my father, I can get you a job as a church custodian in East Northport, get your family out of the city. So my father took the job and he retired. Well, he was a church custodian until he, he passed away in 1984 at the age of 64. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's 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 how we, you know, from Ireland to um, uh, Manhattan. And uh, but 90 five percent of my family are still in ireland really you yeah. go back often I, as much as i can yeah i go back very often actually i haven't been back since 2019 but we'll change that and i mean quite a few it's embarrassing how many cousins really sure yeah you have an identical twin brother is that correct? Uh, fraternal fraternal billy yeah fraternal oh, oh. Twin i brother, thought it yeah. said identical so and i have three older sisters uh, uh two rns uh, one's a uh, nurse practitioner and uh, one was a speech pathologist and audiologist, all retired. What does uh, Billy do, your brother? Uh, high tech medical equipment sales. Oh, huh. yeah. So that was a so pretty you... big move to get to go from Manhattan. I mean, it's a big, big move coming here, obviously, but then to go to Manhattan to Long Island. What year was that? That was uh, that was uh, seventy. Uh, my yeah. father didn't. My father didn't care for. Uh, my father. It's not that he didn't care for America, but he missed Ireland. Whereas my mother never looked over her shoulder. She couldn't get out of there fast enough. Really, she yeah. came here first. Uh, she was a seamstress. Uh, she worked her way up. Got a, a seamstress job with some, uh, you know, shop on Fifth Avenue, and uh, and then my father came a year later. And did, did they meet in Ireland? They met. Yeah, here? no, they were they were dating in Ireland. My oh, father okay. wouldn't pop the question, and uh, I think the story was they met on a bus uh, in uh, in the city somewhere, and that was it. She knew he was on the way over. My father had a sister, Mary, um, who worked with the Boston Red Sox organization for forty years. She was the private secretary of Tom and Jean Yawkey, the owners. Wow! Wow! And uh, so she facilitated a lot of you know their honeymoon these types of things and um uh yeah you didn't grow up a red sox fan did you no i did not uh not in washington heights no, so there's a story be, there right? yeah because right. we would get boxes of the top notch red sox swag and my father we'd all look in the box and we'd be like wow that's nice stuff and down to the <laughs> down to the convent it would go <laughs> <laughs> my brother said to me, "This poor kid somewhere in the country wearing the finest Red Sox." <laughs> certainly in Washington Heights, you'd be like, "Yeah, they yeah, give yeah, you yeah, a funny yeah. look." Um, yeah, uh, yeah. The before the stadium's right across the river, right? The you, Yankee no, Stadium I mean, right across the river. You know. Yeah. Well, tell us I about your martial, your martial arts career too, right? Where you're black. Oh, uh, yes. I uh, second degree. I stopped training about oh uh, twenty years ago. I trained for twenty years. <laughs> Um, I trained with uh, the, some of the great best guys in the world. Um, uh, in Camp Hansen in Okinawa, during the Vietnam War, they would rotate uh, uh, Marines in and out of that base. It was a Marine Corps base. And so out the back door of this particular Camp Hansen was the uh, headquarters of this particular style of karate. You had an inordinate amount of uh, Marines who came back to this country to proliferate that style. It's called Matsubayashi Shurin Ru. 
the very no frills Okinawan style. Um, uh, five bucks in the can on a Monday, Wednesday, Saturday night, very cheap. It wasn't a belt factory. I can tell you that. Um, right. <laughs> I was a white belt for like five years. I thought they just forgot me, but I didn't. <laughs> it, 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 it was not a uh, commercial school. Where's that like, guy, Burke? <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't a commercial school like, oh, on Saturday, you're going to take your double secret test and you're going to pay 250 bucks and you're going to get your. Yeah. No, one night, he, one night he reached in and he pulled out a belt that was like brown with uh, green with brown tips. And he goes, work hard and you'll deserve that someday. And that's the same thing he said to me after seven years when I uh, was showed on, it's called. Uh, he gave me my black belt after seven years and he said, work hard someday, you'll deserve that. Wow. So 20 years of it. Do you, do you do any well, of it anymore? Oh, yeah. No, I train. I you you know, do. Yeah. <laughs> that was the one thing that they asked me. And I remember specifically, they said, what we, what we train, what we show you, don't forget it. It would be an insult to, right. to forget it. So it was complimentary to to acting like uh, at the beginning of a kata, you say hajime, it means begin. So you don't go, oh, wait a minute, you know, oh, let me adjust my, you know, you go, right. you know what I mean? Right. And so, um, it, listen, uh, for five bucks, you were getting s like soaking, like the, the, the warm up was designed to make you pass out, you know, and, um, you know, vomit. It was really good, strong, hard training. It was like having your own personal trainer. You know what I mean? But you were learning something and it was very, uh, you were learning to move with people very, you know, in a sequential move and then weapons. Uh, Tread up your alley, Kubi. Yeah. Did you train? I did. Yeah. Oh, what did you train? Uh, I took a couple of different things. I, I took, uh, uh, I got a brain fart right now, bro. Yeah. Uh, it'll come to me. Uh, Taekwondo, I took for a long time, which is, it's not, it's not made for somebody older with high kicks and stuff no. like that. I have bad knees. It's just not practical. It's not. Uh, I did a little jujitsu, but not anything to uh, speak of. But I did it for a long time, too. It's fun. It's a good workout. It is a good workout. Yeah. And you can throw a beat down if you have to. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, many black belts get their ass kicked every day. So it doesn't... Even monkeys can fall out of trees. That's <laughs> Yeah, I see squirrels yeah. diving all over the place. I'm yeah. like, missing the branch. I'm like, dude, come on, guy. <laughs> so you went to you go to Northport or East. I'm sorry, East Northport. That's There's right. A, I don't Northport. want to start. I don't want to start no fuse here. I'm very you know, proud of it. East Northport. <laughs> and what? When did you know you wanted to be an actor? Like what? Uh, there's a couple of different segues. Uh, my father worked on the docks. He had an Irish accent. He was 6'3", 275. Shit. I said, Pop, I, I want to go to actor. Hollywood. I, I want to be an actor. And he said three words. He goes, a fucking what? <laughs> and uh, so I said, an actor. And he goes, we don't do that. And, I said, oh. and, and he, goes, uh, he goes, we don't even know anybody who does that. And, and then he's like, Mary, come in here. He's fucking... <laughs> So, so, man, you hear what this fucking boy wants to be a fucking actor? You what have no idea. We're going to have to like, smack some sense into him, for God's sakes. I think back on him, and I think the poor guy, you know what I mean? What must he have thought? Like, he just was like, you're going to be a fucking placement, for Christ's sakes. You know yeah, right, you're going right, to. Right, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, so, and we had hooks in the, in, the, in the New York City Police Department from that neighborhood. But um, anyway, he was very supportive in the end, you know. He, he used to take me to classes, and then I got an internship. Uh, uh, it wasn't like guys and dolls and these types. It was, uh, it was, um, uh, anyway, I was supposed to, um, answer the phone and paint scenery and sweep the floor, but I, I tried out for two of the shows and I got them and I'll, I'll try to make this short. So I traveled the country in my senior year of high school rather than go to school. And they've given me 150 bucks a day to eat with. That's the per diem cash untaxed because I'm a student. And I kept it in a shoebox. I couldn't eat $4 worth of food in 1977. Wow. So I keep it in a shoebox. Wow, that's a big number. Two shoeboxes. And I come home and I have these two shoeboxes. And I show my old man. And he goes, <laughs> he goes well, well, what's that? And I said, that's what they gave me for action, for, for acting. He goes, well, fuck, it might not be a bad thing. you know. So, <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, he goes, can you go to school for that? And I said, yeah, yeah. And he goes, well, OK. And so I got a scholarship to a school in West Virginia. I went to Suffolk Community. I went to uh, Delphi. Uh, where else did I? And then I did four years at a state university in New York and Purchase, New York, in uh, Westchester. And that was a tough place to get into. The training was very solid. 
uh, Stanley Tucci, Wesley Snipes, Edie Falco. They were all with me there. I was really? with them there. And um, uh, uh, yeah, so that's how I, I, I was trained. Uh, and so he never got to see you in a, in a big movie. Or no. Oh, no. That sucks. What about your mom? Uh, she passed away uh, 2018. Uh, she was 98. Uh, she oh, was great. Nice. She was, she was a, uh, she was on my, oh yeah. Like I, you know, I saw her almost every day or I took care of her for 17 years. Uh, uh I always try to get acting jobs in New York. Uh, you know, uh, I took it every, almost 98% of her, her doctor's appointments all the time. She was in a terrible accident in 76. She was hit by a drunk driver, mm -hmm. uh, left a uh, handicapped terribly, uh, 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 you know, uh, 20% vision left, oh, wow. but strong, Irish strong. Uh, there's a funny crossover. Bobby Halton grew up in the same town. Bobby Halton's mother and my mother in mass, like nine o'clock on, on a Tuesday. And uh, she'd be like, did you watch Rescue Me last night? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, and Mrs. Halton was the one who told my mother, she said, it's really a filthy show, Mrs. Burke, you know, and and uh, we, Bobby and I would laugh about that and love um, that guy. What a great yeah. guy! Right? Oh, yeah, he was a, a, a guy. We his, father, so his father was uh, very instrumental in my family after my mother was hit by that accident. And his father worked in a law firm. And, and he came in one day and he said to my mother in the hospital, she was in the hospital for over a year. And wow. he said, Mrs. Burke, you're gonna have to talk about suing. My mother said, What? what? And she he said, The lawsuit now. She says, Oh, I'm not suing anybody. He goes, Well, Mrs. Burke, you know. And uh, uh, so, uh, so my mother goes, oh, it's not a Christian thing to do. And, and the joke in the family was Mr. Halton said, uh, well, Mrs. Burke, with all due respect, this has got nothing to do with the son of God. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, got to do with Ben Franklin. That, that, was, that was kind of a go-to expression in our family. Somebody goes, Jesus Christ. And we said, this has got nothing to do with the son of God. But, um, Funny. but so he, nice people, very nice people. Do you think that's where possibly you got the itch for the, to be a fireman, or where? Oh no! Okay, so the Bobby Halton I knew. Oh, he was a he was a skateboard. Oh my god, head. dude! When we uh, had him on the show. We I had him on the show. It. I could not even believe what he was telling us. Like I couldn't even believe. I, it. Well, I, I I'm looking. I was looking, looking, looking for this picture. A couple, 15 years ago, I go online. I want a work a work jacket for the firehouse, whatever. And I said, modeled by Chief Bobby Halton. And I'm looking at the picture. I'm like, that's fucking Bobby Halton. <laughs> so I I email Penwell. I'm like, dear Chief, are you the same? He, and he emails me back. He goes, oh, I've been looking at you for years, Bobby boy. You know. <laughs> So I was like, look at you, you know, and, uh, but I knew I, so he came out here to the Island on a vacation once it was, um, it was actually, uh, it was Billy Goldfeder's wife's 50th birthday party. And there's all, you know, Dugan and everybody are here at our fire hall and Halton is there and he's got his, you know, little drink and everything. And I'm looking at him. He goes, what? And I go, I fucking remember you. <laughs> <laughs> When you had head out of your ass, you were like, like listen this. to the Grateful Dead. It was 180 like, degrees, right? I couldn't believe that this was the same guy. Big but, skateboarder, right? He was on like oh, a world class skateboarder. skateboarder. Um, he was always on it. Surfer? I can tell you that. He was older than me, uh, but he was always on the skateboard. I can remember uh, that. And uh, But a, just so a funny. terrifically, terrifically great guy. He's like, so what, what? Why, what brought you into the fire service then? What? Well, it was my uh, my friendship with uh, Pat Brown. And um, uh, Pat and I started knocking around together like 1985, 86. I was a contractor. I quit acting after I got out of college for like six years. And um, so, so... I can't even believe that's him. It doesn't even look like him, man. The house I'm in right now, the room I'm talking to you from was Pat's room. OK, oh, wow. what we did was like 10 of us from the city would get together. We come out here, we'd rent a house. And and I said to Patty, I said, you know something, Pat, you got to leave the island of fucking Manhattan someday. You know what I mean? So why don't you throw in 1500 bucks uh, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, seven months, we get the place. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, OK. So this was his room and uh, I turned it into kind of an office and uh uh, uh, so on 9-11, when he, uh, was murdered and fell, I figured, you know, let me go back to here, my town. And, you know, Patty used to say, who puts the fucking fires out of here? I mean, geez. <laughs> and he was, was always talking about a conflagration. I'm like, I'm like, and what? He's like, a conflagration. He goes, one go, they're all going to go. And I'm like, I don't know, Joe, Jim, John, you know? And, um, and so what happened was afterwards, when I came after 9-11, his brother, Mike and I 
spent some time on the pile and um, Mike succumbed to 9-11 um, cancer uh, October 30th of 2020. Uh, there's Pat and Mike. There's a funny story about that little medal because Pat gave that to Mike that day and it had a, what's what's this, the ribbon for, uh, with the bugle on it? What the... there's, a, there's a little bugle on that ribbon. So it's a unit citation. A unit citation. So Pat oh. takes one off, gives it to Mike. We're at the bar, and some girl comes up to Mike and goes, "What's that for? The band?" A <laughs> 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 bugle. Um, yeah. <laughs> Mike was a fireman at 37 and 40 on 125th Street, and he put himself through um, uh, medical school at Albany uh, University. And he used to joke that being a, a city fireman was the best summer job he ever had. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but you see the two of these guys, they sounded like, you know, punch drunk Queens boxes. They were both very, very, very brilliant. Mike was just like, he was a, he was an engineer at Grumman and he left Grumman to become a city fireman and, and guys apparently would fall on the floor laughing. Like, why are you leaving here for the city fire department? And while he was a fireman, puts himself through medical school, and he becomes a top-flight emergency medicine physician for thirty years. He retired yeah. out of uh, Nellis Air Force Base. He was a flight surgeon for them. Uh, uh, I remember the FBI contacted me about a character witness for him. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, he's a great guy. <laughs> was, he owes me forty bucks, but fuck it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Did, well, so when you left acting for a little while, did you ever consider becoming a, a city fireman? Uh, no, not a fireman. No, never a fireman because uh, John Timoney was the first deputy chief of police in New York City. And we knew the family, the Timoney family. And so the consciousness of us as children, well, we were told by other first generation, don't become a fireman. There's nothing out of it. it, it that was really? the expression. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, be a policeman. You can get a free lunch at least. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, at, a, at the firehouse, you can get a free yeah, lunch. Well, you know, but um, so anyway, yeah, right. uh, that was my father wanted me to be a police officer, I'm pretty sure. And um, he kind of left us alone just as long as we worked. We always had a job, uh, you know, putting papers together as a kid, six, seven years old with ink on my hands until Wednesday. Bingo tables, cleaning the church, uh, landscaping, lawns, moss rock, brick, shale. Uh, we had to put ourselves through school, which was fine. Um, uh, you know, job, job, job. You're always working. But that was fun because you, if you like to work, it was fun. Right. And if you work with good people, it was a lot of fun. So, um, so uh, yeah, no, I, I, I stumbled back into acting in 1990. What, what made you want to leave, though? Was there any particular reason? Or? Oh, I, you know, yeah, it was after my father died. He, oh, was, okay. in, he was in my head, and, and, like, I could hear him saying, you know, is this what a real man, uh, you know, yeah, you know with, you. The, with the acting? It was in my head, banging around. Listen, that I guy think. was a man's man, right? So, I mean, oh, I mean, big shoes. You know, uh, boiler makers, and, and, you know, he would stare at you sometimes, and you're like, what? You know, you'd be crying, and he's like... <laughs> He's like, why are you crying? I'm like, because you're staring at me. Get out of the I mean, so uh, it was old school. You know, uh, people who came into our home said it was like being in the 1920s or something. It was very strict. And, um, and but like, we didn't know any better. You know, we worshipped him. And he took the wind out of my sails when he passed because uh, he was he was just such a good guy, you know. So you, you find your way back to acting? like what? No, it found me. A, a guy I went to college with uh, said, uh, I'm making a movie. You want to be in it? And I was do I'll never forget this. I was doing a deck on a, a, a brownstone walk-up on Astor Place and Broadway downtown. Patty Brown came over. It was 99 degrees. He came upstairs. He goes, ah, oh, this is great, Bob. I didn't know you did this shit. And I was like, yeah. And we're, like we're putting stringers and we're, we're drilling it to the walls, into the brick using water levels because it's so, you know, uh, tweaked. And uh, he goes, this is beautiful. Fucking massive fire has it. But because we, <laughs> we, we had like. It was no, always crazy about the burning, huh? We had no permits for it. This we oh. just had a client who goes, I want a deck back here. We're like, yeah, no fucking problem. No yeah. problem. I mean, there's 8 billion. I often wanted to go like pull over and just go upstairs and 8 billion pounds of, you know, uh, lumber. Lumber. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. 22 footers were passing up. Uh, nobody stopped us. So, um, so what so, was that movie that the guy approached you with? 
Oh, it was called The Unbelievable Truth. It took 11 days to shoot. It was my first film. And um, you played Josh. And, yeah. And uh, and so it was bought by a company. I went back to work in Brooklyn. I was doing a, 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 a brownstone. We were painting, plastering. Uh, me and my buddy, Paulie Schultz, uh, we did four stories inside. We gave her a fucking wine cellar, dug out of an old coal chute. He, he says one day, he goes, you know, that would be a wonderful wine cellar. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You know, <laughs> trying to get out of here. Trying to get out of here. So, uh, aye, aye, aye. so then, yeah, he calls. He says, listen, the movie got bought. You're going to be on a plane uh, doing press. And that was 33 years ago. So Wow. So what do you think your biggest, your biggest break was that, that made you, that kind of put you on the map that, I mean, because you have a tombstone. I mean, I, I got to laugh. I mean, you talk about tombstone. That's, if that's not one of the most quoted movies in the firehouse, and, and if you're sitting in a firehouse and somebody pulls that quote up, you're like, yeah, that was me. What was that yeah. like? Like, What was it like being on the set of that? Like, shooting horses and riding, uh, you know, sh shooting guns and riding horses. Uh, you know, it was, uh, I, I was pinching myself. You know who gets to do movies? Who gets to be in a western? Uh, you know, I'm looking and I'm talking with having dinner with Sam Elliott and and you know uh, uh, all these other great actors, um, Val and um, uh, I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> well, at the at the shootout at the OK Corral, I say to him, "I got you now, you son of a bitch." Yeah, 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 yeah. Daisy, if you do, Daisy, if you and then do. he. Yeah. He drills me here. Bill Paxton goes like this from yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets yeah. me right here. I'm like, good shooting you. So, uh, and we had fun. We worked, you know, it was it was 110 degrees there the whole time, and um, it's a dry heat. Um, yeah. But it was it was like um like I said, uh, uh, why did I get to do that? How did I get to do that? It was just it was awesome. It was awesome to be in a part of it, you know. So I can't believe that I looked at that when I was looking through your. Uh... You list just before. Yeah. That's 1993, bro. I, I'm not kidding. I had to have watched that movie. I want it's all over a hundred time, times. It has to be a hundred times. If it's, it's on, on, I have to stop. It's, it's, a, it's on all the time. It's a rabbit hole. I can tell you that. Um, <laughs> you go into any firehouse anywhere in the country. Because I've yeah. been in. Well, it, it might not be on, but there's a tape of it. Like two or three of them. Like with dust yeah. on them. It was a standard. Uh there's a lot of different stories about that movie. As a matter of fact, uh, the 24th of June, they're mm -hmm. flying me out to a 30th anniversary of it. I'm not even in the goddamn movie, to tell you that. You know what I mean? Uh, my son, That's awesome, though, my son was like six months old. I said, I'm not going to the premiere. I'm not a big fan of those things. So I sent my, uh, uh, I stayed home with the baby. He was a few weeks old. And I sent my brother and my wife and his wife and, and he comes back, fucking great movie. And I go, well, really? He really? goes, oh, he goes, it's going to be class. He goes, you're not in it, but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what happened was. That's a fireman. They, they, yeah, right? They, 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 they Wait, fought. you played a good dead guy, bro. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 uh, the director got fired after six weeks, and they replaced him with another guy. So what oh, they I heard did that. Was I they, remember that. They cut a lot of the backstory. Uh, Frank McClary, my ca character, was the fastest gun historically. So take Frank first and then cut to me shooting cans. And so all of that was cut out, which was fine with me because uh, Kurt Russell said to us one day, he goes, good news and bad news. The good news is we're going to keep shooting. The bad news is um, everybody's shit is cut out of the movie. <laughs> I was like, do I got to go home? And he goes, no, 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 we're going to stay and keep shooting. So, but it was how, a lot of fun. How is he? How is Who, he? Is Kurt? Cool? Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. No, he's he's a good guy. He's a solid guy. Um, you know, there was uh, uh, friendships I made on that movie that I, I still have. And uh, Bill Paxton being one of them who passed oh, what a, uh, shame, a couple man. of years back. Great guy. Great guy. Funny as hell. Um, a beautiful guy. I'm in touch with his son, you know, on a monthly basis. James, wonderful young man making his way in acting. And um, so... You know, one minute you're watching these people in movies, and the next minute you're talking with them, and it's it's that's always been kind of a surreal, you know, thing to me. Very much like the fire service. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, there he is. You know, here, you know, that's the you, guy. You get to talk with these guys. Have you ever seen anything like that? I've never even heard of anything like that. Of that's the guy uh, when he when lot. what's his name when he's walking when, when he's uh, walking Kurt Russell the water. he's going out to the uh, creek, 
and uh what's his name bill uh what's his name curly he, yeah curly like, goes look at that look at that God, we can oh powers <laughs> booth yeah, yeah yeah and then he after after that after that shootout the guys are talking and he goes have you ever seen anything like that he's like hell i haven't even heard heard anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you did robocop three before that huh uh before uh i get yeah up. yeah that was uh 90 Oh boy, it's a big blur. Ninety two, maybe. Ninety three, it says here. Ninety three. Oh, we did it in ninety two. It came out in ninety three. Oh. So they call me and they're like, they want you to do Robocop. And I'm like, why? And uh uh I had done two like classy independent films. I says, How do they how do they see me as a robot for Christ's sake uh, at this point? And I, I said, look, Jesus Christ, like anybody could do it. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, what do they need me for? And, and they kept saying, no, cause I look like Weller a little bit. You do and, look uh, like if with the thing on, you look like Weller, even yeah, with the thing off. Yeah. So, um, so I, I held out for like eight months now. Thank you all. I'm flattered. Cause you got to watch how you say no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden my wife came home one day and I said, Hello, Mrs. Robo. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, because they sent you the number. <laughs> yeah. They sent you the right number. You're like, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm doing yeah. this. Robocop? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Maybe we can make this work. Maybe know? we can make this work. <laughs> yeah. I used to call it humping the garbage can. It was, like, <laughs> oh, it was uh, more oil. You know, so. All right, so let's get to the fire service a little bit. When did you become, when, when did you want to get involved in the uh, fire so service? So, again, after after uh, we operated, well, we, we worked on, uh, like, trying to find Pat, trying to find anybody. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things I observed downtown was, like, by virtue of how many people you lost, that's where you were on the pile. And three truck was going, like, right up every night. And um, so I, I was standing outside the firehouse with Pat's brother, Mike, and uh, – they said, Mike, what do you want to do? And he goes, I want to go look for Pat. And he just points to me. He goes, and you're coming. And I was like, I, I, I got nauseous, to tell you the truth. I had never – let me just preface this by way of saying I hung around with Pat. I, I knew you know, friends of his um, in the fire service, and I had zero idea what was involved with the job. I had zero. you know. And I'm sitting down listening to these guys talk and you know about – pushing lines, taking doors, this, that, the other. And I still, I'm a civilian who hangs out with, happens to have friends who are firemen, zero idea of what's involved in and the not job. just any fireman, the man. Well, no, you know I didn't. I, mean? like, I, didn't the guy. I didn't know that at the time. Uh, yeah. He thought what I did was nerve wracking. I'm like, give me a fucking break. So, um, so you know, it's funny, years later, I think through osmosis or something that I, I did understand that I did pay attention to certain things that he was saying, certain um, ways that he conducted himself on the fire ground, um, certain ways that he did not conduct himself. Um, so anyway, yeah, I came back to my town. I says, will you guys take me? And they're like, how old are you? I said, 41. Yeah, sure. Oh, and off I go to the uh, Suffolk County Fire Academy. Great training. Can't say enough about the instructors there. I think there are a lot of guys from your job who may yeah. be moonlight. Um, and they're gentlemen, just gentlemen, uh, professional no matter how bad you screw something up, it's always okay, fellas. Couple things, you know. What I mean, it's it's never like this, you know. The meaning, yeah. No, no, no. And another th thing about uh, the fire service for me is the fact that it's a learning culture, constantly learning. Constantly. I said to a guy the other day, honest to God, I said, uh, "How are they doing it now?" Because he just come out last year, and he goes, "Oh, they're doing it." I feel it was. Uh, uh, I'm always asking the new kids, like, "How do they do it now? How do they, you know, whatever it is, whatever task it is, it could be small, it could be big." Um, and you try and keep up on these things, but at the same time, a lot of times they're switching things up. It could be something as benign as, you know, opening a hydrant, 13 and a half, and, you know, universal. Yeah. Oh, no, Mr. Burke, they're opening it the whole way. Oh, <laughs> um, you know, so is true. Uh, you have to, like, speak yeah, up. Yeah. So, um, uh, and, and, you know, keeping up the training with the young guys. Um, uh, we cool. are. He's a little diesel up back there. I see diesel. that, bro. He's got some pipes going there, bro. Uh, uh, not only are we a uh, volunteer, we are seasonal and uh, we are chronically understaffed. So, uh, you know, you, yeah, yeah. But here, like in the winter, <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, it's, like I say, seasonal. So you have a, a, a good part of the um, membership who goes back to wherever their uh, primary domicile right. is. Right. So for the audience, you're on Fire Island, right? Ocean Beach, ostensibly, yeah. Ocean Beach, which is... 
I mean, is there there's one bridge to Fire Island? No, there's two. There's one on the east and one on the west, but okay. we only use the one on the west. How, how many companies are on Fire five? Island? Five companies, which consist of what? Any engine companies, ladder companies, but no ladders operations at all. Zero ladder. There are no ladder operations. So no who, ladder operations at all. You're conducting yourself as a truck company and as a uh, subject to when you're due, when you come right. in, uh, you'll be tasked. You know, you will not be able to. I mean, you get up on the roof next to you, you're a ladder company. You're, you know, you're a tower ladder. Um, so you have to be ready to, um, to. You know whatever your task is to be able to perform it um subject to when you are due that's like hey, what's listen, the we, were in the, we were in the squad so we did both well yeah absolutely right. absolutely let me just also preface that by way of saying very straightforward here we don't do mvas i mean we have car fires we have truck fires things like that but you're not doing um what you are doing is straightforward you know wood frame uh balloon construction residential taxpayers with 30 mile an hour winds every day. Well, you know, a guy said one time, he says, you know, Burke, when does your size up begin? I said, out here when I open my fucking eyes in the morning, you know, what I mean? <laughs> uh, because you got to know where are you going to lay in, you know, um, and where is your water? Some of the municipalities here have shitty water. Some have, we have very good water in Ocean Beach. We'll, we'll, you know, stretch five inch, a half a mile sometimes to, you know, bring better water with you. Um, so there's it's it's you know i i've been reading lately very good things about the fire service on you know these these websites and one was like you know you have to be an athlete but you never get to know when the game is played you know and um i like that i i i get that you have to you know um well that's all pre-plan and, and and training and drilling you know but here we practice short man drills three guys getting as massive amount of water going as possible, stretching lines for other people who are coming in. You uh, guys have a lot of exposure problems, I would imagine, a lot, right? Back to conflagration. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, everything's a small wood bungalow, right, or something like that? Oh, there's no, some no. pretty big homes over well, there. Oh, there yeah. Massive, you know, yeah. plastic boxes being built. Um, they are daunting because we don't have the tower operations so you're wondering, am I going to spend time throwing a ladder there or am I going to just save his house? You know what I mean? Yeah, right. And, right, and right. with three guys on a windy February night, uh, you don't get a lot of choices. You have to make quick choices about, um, you know, uh, risk and what reward and right. those type of assessments. What's the population it, in the summer and the winter? Uh, I, I couldn't really tell you. It's like I, I've heard figures like uh, 600, 700 in the winter. Uh, when COVID hit, um, a lot, a lot of people came out, um, hmm. uh, and in the, in the, in the summertime, I actually don't know what the numbers are. You have a lot of day trippers. We have two ALS ambulances, um, and we do a lot of medevacs also. Uh, if you get jammed up, you know, designation wise, you know, uh, I don't really know what the designations are. Uh, just in terms of your injury, you're going to go out by helicopter. <laughs> If we drive you down the beach, if you don't have a broken neck, you're going to get one. Uh, so you, you put in the helicopter and you go to uh, you can go to Stony Brook, Southside, um, anywhere that has a trauma center and Ooh, a helipad. You were talking about mutual aid before. Who would be first coming over for mutual aid? For you uh, if it's east of the district, <clears throat> um, Ocean Bay Park, Point of Woods. If it's west of the district, Fair Harbor, Salt Air, uh, Kismet. And, you know, actually, Chief, or rather, Captain Bertucci said once, he goes, we're all five Fox. different five different engine companies. In the oh, winter. Bertucci from? Uh, 18. Rest uh, yeah. Rescue 4. He was oh, was it four? Captain, four? Captain of Rescue 4, wasn't he? No. Oh, no, Captain of 18. 18. 18. Right. I was in probing school with him, too. He's out there by you? Uh, he's about uh, three miles uh, west of me. Get out of here. I always said he should have got a gel company. should have started a gel company. Yeah, you had the perfect hair, that guy. You, do me a favor, ask him <laughs> oh, about uh, the first day when he wore the wrong shirt in Proby School. Next time you see him, <laughs> wow, he's never gonna forget that one, bro. <laughs> the the Fonz. Do they still yeah. have the ferry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll be taking it uh, all of um, uh, July and August because private vehicles have to be off the island. Right. You're probably not doing any work right now. There's a writer's strike, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it is what it is. They. Uh, they Are you come upset to, about that? 
Um, yeah, because <laughs> they're going to be doing away with writers. You just type in what you want to the computer and the, the computer AI guys there. right now. That's all I keep hearing about is this AI stuff. I'm not too sure what's going on. It's out of the bag. It's uh, it is. It's bad. It's bad. Really? You, won't, you won't need writers. <clears throat> I've been hearing a writers. lot about this. and mm. uh, It's almost like I could pump in uh, every episode of Sopranos. Now, Sopranos ended. They're all at the dining room, the, the diner table. And you could say to the computer, hey, give me the next episode. What Come would be, what would yeah, be a cabbage. great way to have this show recrank itself, reconstitute itself? You press enter, that, that computer, that program will give Paragraphs you. Paragraphs and, and, oh. and everything, scripts, everything. Oh, yeah, some of the so stuff even more. What was your favorite? What was your favorite uh, movie? Did we ask them that already? What was I your did, favorite movie? Didn't, yeah. I didn't really have a favorite. I liked different ones for different reasons. Um, I like to be honest. Uh, historical films where you're actually playing somebody that actually lived. Then yeah, you get yeah, to yeah. research the person. You're either gonna um, try for a to duplicate the person, or or you're gonna go off on your own. Uh, when I did um, General Mattis in Generation Kill, you know, he has a high pitched voice, very specific. Um, and the dialogue for the scenes there called for somebody barking orders and being, you know, um, very what the audience would think is Marine like in terms of command presence. Uh, so I didn't really do an imitation of him per se. Um, I did my own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I thought, you know, uh, Marine Corps general leading the first marine division should sound like and that was scary <laughs> uh because i had uh i think 10 or 15 of the guys who were actually in the first marine division standing there like this go okay actor boy <laughs> yeah. you know. they do that a lot right they have like oh, no, the guys they, for they, the movies like well they had consultants but right, the guy right, right. who wrote it brought a lot of his buddies over there was one particular marine corps recon sniper named rudy reyes um this guy's actually on the calendar of marine corps recon i mean he's just an incredible specimen you know x amount of confirmed kills um and and we're, we're still in touch he actually came out here to the beach to uh, a warrior appreciation event we had and um uh so yeah and 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 so certain you know roles that where you have to um uh you know research and historically it's always interesting so you did seven years on rescue me like how yeah what was uh, did they uh, did they know you were fireman did they approach you no i wasn't uh uh i was coaching third base i remember in little league and my phone rang and it was like oh they want you to do rescue me and i go oh who Le dennis leary oh okay so the first um they told me you're playing his cousin i said oh yeah and he goes it's the gavin family they're irish and yeah he goes you're a priest and i said no, 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 no. <laughs> wait a minute no. hold on all on all the phone so this dennis we got on the phone and uh dennis says you'll be a priest for the first season and i said you throw me a fucking curveball all right you know the, oh the character does this now and i'm like no nah, this fucking character does not do that now. so he was true to his word you know i left the priesthood after the first season and then i just became like uh like kind of the family consigliere uh, if irish families can have a consigliere <laughs> <laughs> make it yeah I actually uh, met uh, uh, Dennis. We went. To, he he had contacted, I guess, through the FDNY. He wanted to do <clears throat> this was for the twentieth anniversary for the squads. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. And when we, uh, you know, all a lot of the squads, I think five out of five out of the seven lost everybody. Wow. And uh, so he wanted to do something about that. So he got in touch with a friend of mine at uh, downtown, and then they contacted me, and then I actually went to go sit with him and and his son. And um, yeah, 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 and we were bullshitting. He actually took us out for lunch, and we, you know, I was telling him some of the stories that I had seen and what I heard. And he's like, "This is going to be great. I'm looking for, you know, I'm going to do this. You know, I want to do this." We had a year. Yeah, this was. Uh, so yeah, it was like 20, and then sure as shit, COVID hit, and wow. uh, that's kind of why it didn't get done. And then a little while after that. I had uh, contacted him to try and see if I talked to his son mostly. I guess he handles most of his stuff. And uh, he's been pretty cool with me. I haven't really called him uh, or texted him. Like you said, time goes by probably like six months. But he said, maybe we'll get him on. But uh, I guess then he started a new 
show right now he's doing something like really took off i think or something like that i, I don't even know dennis did he do I, anything is he doing i something? actually did a thing with him called erase it was a pilot it didn't get picked up I, i'm not even sure what he's doing now i didn't even ask him yeah, yeah. Uh, i'll tell you one thing let me say one thing about him uh after the worcester cult storage fire his uh his uh cousin, cousin. Jeremiah, jeremiah lucy jerry lucy who has uh his children are on the job in um worcester massachusetts now so Dennis starts this uh, foundation. He's another guy, actor, doesn't have to do it. Uh, how many how many firefighter foundations can you name that are run by actors since 1999? You can't. So I always respected that about him. And then when 9-11 came around, he was kind of poised to like, you know, raise money and help families and do whatever he needed to do. And then he got in with the FDNY. But, it, you know, this, this many years later, <laughs> this many years later, um, no mission fatigue. He keeps up in the ante. Yeah, no doubt. You know what I mean? And I always respect that because, you know, so many times after, you know, uh, um, you know, especially with veterans, you know, oh, everybody falls asleep. Everybody forgets. After 9-11, everybody's on the West Side Highway holding up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign. And then all of a sudden, it's oh, gone. you know, it's gone. So he is not a guy who does that. A couple of years ago, he said, uh, he goes, you know, people write a check for the FDNY Foundation, for the Leary Foundation. He goes, there's nothing to that. Any rich guy can write a check. He goes, let's bring them to the rock. Let's put them, let's have them push a line. Let's have them, you know, rope. And, awesome. And and I'm telling you. Our you guys know, say that some of the best, the, the, it's a lot of fun, those. those it's, well, it's, I think it's a good morale booster. The guys seem to enjoy it, the instructors, and they're complete right. gentlemen, professionals. They get a kick out of it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But uh, and he raises a lot of money, and uh, so when did that start? Bro? Seven years ago, the firefighter challenge. Wow, he's doing so it, it that long, huh? Like, well, that's just the challenge. He would have these events, uh, right. you know, up. He in, put a building there. He put, he put uh, several. Yeah, he put, yeah, yeah. The building was like five million. The mobile command post was seven hundred and fifty thousand. I got a call. I, I think it was a guy named Jimmy Brennan and a guy named Bobby Bobby Higgins, who were working at the. I can't remember if it was them who called me, but they put a, a flashover simulator and they said, Hey, Burke, what's up? And I said, Whatever. Yeah, it's on the doing? third floor or something. Third yeah, floor. Yeah. And he goes, It's, it's broke. It's broke. I said, What's broke? He goes, the, the simulator. And I said, So what are you calling me for? And he goes, uh, Well, who has the service contract? Like, I don't fucking know. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> so we had to go out and raise money to, we never, nobody ever bought a service contract for the uh, flashover simulator. But here again, uh, uh, you know, when Joe uh, DiBonato, uh, 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 passed away, Joey, and um, you know, Chief uh, DiBonato calls me and he says, "We'd like you to be the the celebrity." And I go, "Chief, I tell you whatever I, I tell everybody. If I'm your celebrity, you're already in fucking trouble." Like, <laughs> so, so, and then I, I, you know, I had a further talk and I said, uh, "Yeah, I'll see what I can do." So my instinct was to call Dennis and um, I said, "Listen, you got to give these guys some money to start their foundation up." And uh, it's firefighter survival. And Dennis is like no pushover. You know, he goes, Burke, people give me money for my foundation. I don't fucking give it to you. Like this. <laughs> so, so anyway, you know, uh, Chief D wrote a, a, a grant for months and months, uh, 18 months of grant writing, because Dennis was not running his own foundation. It was being run by a, an outfit called Innovative Philanthropy. And he had, you know, Chief D has to write a grant for these right, people. Right, 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 right. So Dennis actually decided, you know, he said, well, we've approved some money and I'm not going to say what it is here, but it was substantial. So I tell chief, you know, tell, we're, we're talking about it. And he said, it's X amount every, every year, each year for 10 years. And we were like, my own, whoa, you know, it was good. So the way I always describe it is, um, you know, Dennis has been instrumental in buying material, uh, uh, you know, equipment, uh, you name it, boats. We restored 14 to 22 firehouses in, in New Orleans. I did five trips down there. Um, wow, I didn't know yeah. that. Oh, yeah. And um, I brought my son. He was 13. They're like, how old is he? Because he had to be 16. I said, he's 16. <laughs> His mother's on the phone. Is it moldy down there? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> So, is so, he gonna have his allergy medication? No, like, <laughs> I have pictures of my son. He's got the uh, he's got the cutters and he's moldy he's, down there. We we sent him out in the backyard with the cutters and he's he's breaking cinder blocks. And I said that'll keep him busy. Yeah. And this guy Kevin Parent, he was the commissioner of the fire service. He comes out the back. He's like, 
who are you? <laughs> but anyway, uh, so uh, Leary, where he as he buys uh, material, uh, uh, Chief D's foundation has become the shock troops. You know what I mean? You can have all the thermal images and all the you know doors and uh, tools you like, but unless you have uh, uh, guys teaching and instructing and you know, Chief D puts together. It's like learning, you know, oh, baseball from man. the Yankees. You great know? man, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, very effective. Uh, and 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 again, another guy who didn't sit back. You know, uh, who, who could have. Um, and he's no nonsense too. You know. Yeah, he's, no. There's very. <laughs> the what is it? I wrote <laughs> this word down. The uh, the friction coefficient is very fucking low. <laughs> 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 um, uh, no, he's a great guy I, yeah. I i can't tell you how much i admire that man and um you know uh he is a fireman fireman that guy man he is yeah. he lives and breathes it uh, well respected too joey joey was kind of i guess helping out with the suffolk county fire academy one night and i was over there and i was getting my classes in those days you had to go to a different firehouse to get each of the the training, you know, so it was ropes, knots, and ladders one night, and and he, me and this guy I was with, and and he goes, Joey comes, I don't know who he is, but I know he's like an elite guy, I, just the way he's conducting himself. Oh, swagger. And, yeah, and he goes, uh, tie a half itch, tie a clove itch, uh, tie a bowling, tie a Beckett bend, and I'm like killing it with my all my dyslexia. I'm sweating, and, and I'm killing every knot, and he goes, where are you from? I said, uh, Ocean Beach, tying up fucking boats your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, whoa, you know, I got past that guy. I ended up with boats. That, well, that's what he said, which is not true. I mean, I just knew those that's four so knots. Funny. Mm. But I remember him specifically. And um, then when, you know, after that particular Sunday and that particular operation, uh, Dennis went to work and, uh, you know, uh, uh, they they had an, uh, an evening honoring the firemen and uh, who were involved in that day. And, and and again, you know, uh, you can lay back, you can sit back and do nothing. But uh, the Demon Auto Foundation has exponentially increased. I oh mean, yeah, Jeff Cool um, does a lot for that. For that, Jeff too. is Jeff. fantastic. I mean, fantastic. Yeah. These guys don't have to. You know, I mean, you know, but it, it's so effective the training. And I said to Dennis, Dennis, a couple of years ago, we were at the Rock, and he goes, "Oh, we've trained eighteen hundred firemen." I said, "No, you haven't." And I got my phone out and got my calculator. I said, you trained about 800,000. He's like, what are you talking about? So you don't understand the fire service. If, if two guys come to chief D's seminar, they go back and train, five guys, right. train yeah. five guys who train five guys. And I said, so do the math. And he's like, Oh, I never. So, you know, it's, it's very, guys are going home, I believe because of the deep auto foundation. Yeah. Don't just get on the job, bro. Get, in yeah, get it. into yeah. the job. Yeah. I, I, I say this to Louie. Every year around 9-11, like, everybody throws around the old, uh, you know, never forget, never forget, never forget, you know. But it's guys like you and Dennis and Chief D and all these other guys who truly, you know, make those words count. And we we can't tell you. Like, Louie and I, we lost 19 guys from our firehouse. So that's something that's never going to go away. So it's guys who actually put their money where their mouth is really, you know, it means a lot to us. And on top of that, if you're one of those guys, you're on the top floor and it gets crappy and you don't have a rope, you know. Oh that's yeah. you know, you you only got one shot at that, you know. And we practiced yeah. that. We practiced when we got the ropes back. Um, you know, we practiced all different ways, right? It wasn't just, you know, go back, you know, the way the job taught you was go back, you know, to here, tie off, you know. You you don't have that time, you know what I mean? It was put your tool in the corner, click it, clip in, roll out, out the know? window. And yeah. we were out the window. You could have five guys go on one hook. You know, we, we practiced every scenario because, you yeah, you knew you weren't going to have the time to do that. So, right. But we really, like I said, Bob, we really appreciate guys like you. And oh, listen, just... it's a, it's an honor. Like you, you talk about, you know, sports, sports heroes. Oh, really? Um, you know, uh, show business. Oh, wow. That guy's, you know, when I understood and I started to interact with people in the in the fire service, not, you know, uh, PD, I don't really know, but the fire service, it was just like, it was amazing to me. Uh, you know, the skills, uh, uh, the perishable skills that you have to keep up. Oh, my up. goodness, yeah. Um, 
you know, it, it, all of the tasks. I remember when Pat was studying for lieutenant, and I'm like, what the fuck? And he had a pile of books. Pile of books. And, and I was like, <laughs> I said, what are, you, what are you responsible for on the test? He said, everything. And I was like, well, how are you going to, like, get that amount of material into your head? And then there's captains and, you know, all these tests. Um <laughs> So you got to respect, you know, people want somebody knowledgeable and, you know, uh, uh, you dial 911 in this country, somebody's coming. You don't want them to be a schnook. You want them to know what he's doing. Yeah. How, how did the, uh, how does Hollywood, you know, I mean, I'm sure most of the people know that you're a fireman, right? How does that play out with them? Do they, how do they react to that? Do they say anything or is it? Uh yeah, you know, that's a hard question. And some just <laughs> yes and no. You know what I mean? Uh, if they know, they know. If they want to ask something, they can ask. Um, there was a couple of mornings on different jobs where I went to work the night before, let's say, and, you know, didn't get any sleep. So, no, like, so the answer, well, the answer to the question is somebody ain't getting their money's worth out of me the next day. Right? <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> you know, a, uh, on, the, on Rescue Me a couple of times, it's like, oh, you got to buy a place at home? You smell like shit. And, um, uh, there, and you know, it was inevitable. My wife, something big would be coming up. I'd be leaving for Ireland. I'd be, leaving, and we'd always get, you know, banged Job. out. That yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, I remember once I came home from Africa, I was there for months and, and I didn't sleep. I'm going to get turned around. I haven't been asleep in 48 hours, you know, boom, that's when you're going to go. So, uh, uh, um, but here it's very, you know, it's, it's modest, it's straightforward, um, uh, you're just doing for your community. Uh, we have very good dedicated members in the ocean beach fire department. And, um, you know, everybody I think tries their best. Uh, you're coming to a place where you're supposed to be vacationing and yet you, you're giving your time and your energy to doing this. And so it's, that's impressive to me. How are you guys doing with getting new members? Like you got a lot of young guys coming in. Yeah, it's tight, right? Um, you know, it's funny because we have one particular uh, young man I'm thinking about, and th this guy is just a home run. You know, like I would send him to a truck company on your job tomorrow. He just one of those, it's like he's a 1940s throwback. He just gets it. And he doesn't yeah. really talk too much, too. You know I mean? Beautiful. So, uh, Perfect. I mean, <laughs> he just, he, he just keep your mouth shut and uh, get to work. Know, I stepped aside as captain just to leave a spot, and he, he got voted up. And, uh, so uh he's a great young guy but the numbers are bad and then it's not like you got to spoon feed them to keep them but you shouldn't you should talk nice to them you know it's like um really? it's a whole new you guys know it's a whole yeah, new yeah. world and and um you know i i've decided i have adjectives i don't have pronouns i have adjectives i uh smart funny as fuck and good looking <laughs> so, <laughs> that's uh that's a common denominator <laughs> across the country, though, that uh, they're not getting the people. No, they're not getting the people. Not joining, no. I think a lot of it, too, is uh, the fire training. A lot of it is, you know, Johnny doesn't want to go to college. He wants to stay in his town. He's going to be a mechanic. He's going to make a good living. But now he's going to go to firefighter one. You know what I mean? It's a lot of classroom. So he wasn't counting on that, you know. And, yeah, right. And I think they lose a lot of guys. Uh, I think you should be trained for what your district holds you know what i mean and then some obviously but um and then osha fema homeless everybody's piling on if you break your fingernail they're going to send you for nine hours on how not to break your fingernail you know um uh, gentler kind of fire service what's that yeah absolutely the gentler absolutely. kind of fire service how I mean, does the, the gentler kind of fire service yes yeah uh, kind of gentler yes yeah, it's, yeah kind how of did something. you uh adapt to the firehouse kitchen table when you when you first went to the fire department, like, cause you know, and that you have to realize that that doesn't translate to everyday people. Right. So you have to leave that in the firehouse, like with your other job. Cause my wife tells me all the time, you're not in the firehouse. That, 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 it's, not, <laughs> it's, not, it's not funny here. You know? <laughs> so yeah. I'm sure you have to leave that in the firehouse. You can't bring that to, you know, the Hollywood scene, right. Cause they won't get it. Bro, I'm a volley. I could bring it anywhere I want. <laughs> um, I could bitch and moan like you can't believe. Um, you know, with me, it's a funny thing because when I started, uh, we go on like benign, you know, down power lines, odor of gas, uh, this, that, the other. And the homeowner would be looking at us coming in and be like, hey, man, that's the guy from Special Vic, you know. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, 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 
If you don't <laughs> talk like, to them, <laughs> you know, oh, there he is. If you don't talk to them, then you're a schnook. You know, oh, he's too yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hello. Yes. Oh, hello. You know, yes, I live here. And yes, you know. So then you have firemen, other members going, you know, what are you back there? You're bullshit. And now we're 20 minutes. I said, well, you were the one who told them that that was me. <laughs> so now we have a thing. It's a kind of a go to, uh, you know, it's like, hey, isn't that the guy from he's like, no, 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 no. He, he looks like him. Looks like him. <laughs> Let's wrap brother. it up. Wrap it, it up. Wrap it up. Brother. So um, I'm a good wrap it up. Yeah. God, let's look at some of those fire photos. Just this guy goes to okay. some fire out there, bro. All right. We got this. This is a good one here. Is that it? Give us a little description on this one, Bob. What I'm pretty sure that was a nor'easter. There was 68 mile an hour winds. Uh, we were called in as, uh, oh no, that was in our district. That was the uh, east end uh, in a town called uh, Ocean Bay Park. It was a particularly bad fire because of the, you know, we all had embers fall on our heads, but very rarely do I get them smacking me at 50 miles an hour. Uh, <laughs> that, that, so I was downwind of that one. Uh, we held the exposure. Uh, we had shitty water because everybody north and upwind of the fire was killing it, you know, and I was asking for some of those uh, elements to uh, shut down that, that would inform our pressure. They were thief in water. All right. Give us another one, guys. There's a couple. Yeah, that, uh, that's, 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 the, that's uh, the one uh, that uh, Montauk gave you the heads up on, right? I was going to say, yeah, right? Binoculars. Um, yeah, that's uh, uh, one structure. The the uh, exposure is starting to uh, to go. Uh, uh, I had a two and a half inch stretch. I responded from my home to that fire ground. I actually, I used to do that back in the day. Nobody really bothered me. Um, but uh, we've I've since curtailed that type of thing. I had gear at home. Um, so uh, that is in a town called Fair Harbor. We were coming as mutual aid. Actually, Fair Harbor, it's funny because my my uh, family friend's house burned down. I think that's the same picture. It almost burned his house down, which was right next door, or their house down next door. It was crazy. Really? Oh, I think that's it's, the house. that. Yeah. Well, it, it might be because, like I tell you, when it goes here, it goes awfully it quick. It goes. They yeah, have those big so access cool. problems. They have access problems there because there's a boardwalk that cuts through most of those houses in there, and you ain't getting – Yeah, down there. So I, what I tried to implement last year was the Minuteman with uh, 200 or, or 300 uh, foot loads. You just take off. If you want it, we call it deck bag. It's an a, a inch and three-quarter, uh, another bunch of lengths. You can connect quick. Everything is speed, 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 speed. And at nighttime, it's dark as hell out here. Lots of times you're operating in sand. Um, it, like I said, you're going to get a large volume of fire for a, a, a good couple of minutes. And uh, you know, as they say, every fire eventually burns itself out. But, um, yeah. you know, uh, basically it's uh, relay um, uh, operations should you have a bad hydrant or bad water. And then quick water, short man. Get it stretched, knock it down, um, and exposure. How, how does the wife feel about you being a fireman? Like, does she ever say anything? Like, listen, no, we're good. Dude. You, you, you know, you don't really got to do this. <laughs> if we're if okay. somebody says something to her, like me, turns says, "Oh, your fucking husband," you know, it's like then I'm like, then, then I have a problem. <laughs> then I have a problem. You know, right? Um, I can't even say what she says. Um, no, she knows. She knows my relationship with Pat. She knows my fire service is all dedicated to his memory. Um, you know, you have helmet too. I, um, talk about. I, uh, 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 I don't know. I, I, it, it, it's a very hard thing to say, you know, it's like, I got, uh, it seemed to me to be the next right thing to do. Do you know what I mean? Uh, uh, to take up because why should it be Jim and Joe and, you know, why I'm here, I'm able-bodied, let it be me. It's the way our country started, uh, 65, 70% of the country of volleys, uh, uh, Guy said to me a couple of weeks ago, well, all firemen are volleys, some just get paid. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, there's great truth in it. And, you know, uh, sometimes you get frustrated with, uh, you know, people's level of commitment or, or uh, able bodiedness. Or, but, you know, listen, people turn out, they turn out, everybody has their place. And um, you just hope nobody gets hurt. Because that can happen. The fire can, here can kill you just as quick. Oh, yeah. fire is fire. fire can kill you. Fire anyway. is fire. It doesn't it's impervious. It doesn't care. Yeah. And and here you just like if you push, like we had a fire, uh, you know, 
two different fires a block away from each other. One was extremely dangerous, but not a large body of fire. They went in the back of the house into the kitchen because they saw the smoke. I go in, the, the camera's working, there's a charge line ready. Everything in the kitchen is melted. The stove, the, the uh, microwave, it's hot. And I go, there's no fire here, get the fuck. So we rededicate the line out the front door, take the front door, the fire's underneath the stairway, it's been burning for hours apparently. The wainscot in this house was so thick that it was holding it. Yeah, it was holding it. So it was burning up three stories. Um, we knocked the fire down at the bottom of the stairs, and then we work. We have good stairs. We work <laughs> our way up the three stories, and then we're pulling ceilings as we go. Um, so that was a dangerous fire. And then there was another fire. It was a large volume of fire, but we're outside. It's an exterior operation. It's like just nobody get hurt, nobody trip, nobody fall, nobody, you know, because right. you're not going into this thing. You know, there's not. Right. There's right. nobody in the house. Um, that Surround goes. and drown. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? That's all I. Yeah, yeah. When there's, I'll you tell you, no wife has it. That's uh, it. Uh, uh, first thing about Patty Brown. Uh, my, the first fire I ever pushed. I was um, a couple of months. Two things. I was a couple of months out of uh, the school, the training academy, and we get a call, and it's it's really you know it's a residential structure, a single uh, family, and uh, it but it's blowing out a couple of windows, and here's Billy Goldfeather who comes out here to vacation and he's like this, <laughs> you know, and I'm telling you, and I said, Hey chief, how are you doing? And he goes, and he was taking this seminar the next day. That's and he goes, how are you doing? And I'm flaking out the first line. And, uh, and I said to him, uh, a little performance pressure, don't you? Under think? pressure. There's a and, little more he pressure. Goes, he goes, I'll get the fuck out of here if you're like, no, you know. <laughs> so they don't think we have to do the job. I'm back up. And, um, but it's really banking down. It's very hot now. I'm like 20 seconds later, I think maybe I won't push this. This is my first push. And and I remember masking up and I remember thinking, I didn't sign on for this. <laughs> and then I remember Patty Brown's voice came to me, goes, This is exactly what you fucking signed on for. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and I thought, oh shit. So now down we go, we operate for maybe three, four minutes, knock it down. It's it's all good. And um, you know, uh, uh, so yeah, golf was there at my first fire. And then the next day he gives the seminar, he goes, very aggressive attack. Of <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, but it is what it is. You're doing for your community and uh, you're just hoping nobody gets hurt. And, um, you know, again, I, the only thing I did at that fire was what, um, what I was trained to do. Do you know what I mean? Mask yeah. up properly, size up properly. I looked at a guy who was a beautiful member of our department. He could fart and get you water, this guy. And um, uh, and so we were ready to go. Now you just got to do what you were trained to do. And uh, it's funny because you're an actor. You're like, how did I get here? You know? <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, uh, you know, then you get a little bit of the bug and you say to yourself, okay, this can be done safely. It can be done um, assertively. And and um, so then my wife says to me, why are you do well, like what, what? I says, well, if I didn't, if we didn't operate like that, we'd be putting out half the half the right. time. So, better to go to work for hard for a few minutes and see what right. you can accomplish. It is, it is. I mean, once you yeah. start doing it, if you like, you said, if you get the bug, I mean, I was just going to ask you. I there was no doing way it. I could. I would do well, anything else. There's nothing nah. else I would rather do than right. run it through a burning building. Uh, that's what I was just going to ask you. Other than doing it because you know, Patty's, you know, influence. Do you enjoy doing it? Is that do you? I like the training. I like uh, drilling. I like learning new stuff. I like being successful. <laughs> when I started the fire service training, I, I was 41 years old. I did not want to be unsuccessful at things. I'm right. fucking 41, bro. I know how to do this. I didn't know how to do it. You know what I mean? And that was like a weird feeling. You know what I mean? I'm not a mechanical person. Um, I'm six, I'll be 63 years old. They're like, well, you're going to start, you know, being a chauffeur. I'm like, you don't want me trying to get water. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I know my limitations. I'll, I'll I'll try it. And if some of the guys are listening, <laughs> now they have proof I said that. But, um, <laughs> while I'm still able-bodied, you know, it's 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 a weird thing. You can go to the fire academy and uh, you're doing an evolution, and somebody goes, "Hey, Bob, one of the instructors, hey, Joe," and he says, "Why don't you let the young guys take it?" Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Today we are the young guys, you know. So, uh, you know. There is I, no doubt it's a young man's job. Right? I often wonder, you know, you guys know, you get on jobs uh, where you're operating at 80% of your physical capacity, and then the fire changes and it calls for 100%. Now you got to go 100%, and then it calls for 
10%, you know what I mean? And you're like, wait a minute, I'm going to have a massive heart attack here if I just keep this. Mm. And um, so that's why, that's another reason to stay in shape. You know, mm. uh, you definitely, definitely have to be in shape. You know what? So. You know what's so funny that you say that is because when I think back, when I got on the job, Kevin got on the job, 20, you know, Gonzo, 23 years old, I got on the job. There was, you could not stop me. Right. I would be the first guy in. I was going to be the first guy in the back room. I was going to be wherever nobody was going to be. Right. And then as time got, you know, went on, you know, I 10 years later after 9-11, I saw guys die. We had the, the, the Father's Day fire. You know, you know, Kevin was at the Father's Day fire. We would go through all wow. this stuff. Guys are dying all over the place. And then I become lieutenant. And now I'm working one of the busiest companies on the job in New York City, in Brooklyn. And. All of a sudden, now I'm like, no, 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 no. Hold on one second. Let's not do that. Hold, hold on one second. You know, maybe so. And and I was still aggressive, but I found myself watching mm. out more for everybody else except myself, right? And then towards the end of the career, I was coming up 26, 27 years. Even for myself, like I felt like I was more concerned. Not more concerned, but I was somewhat concerned about. I don't want to die. At, at the end, you know what I mean? I don't want to, you know, I was still aggressive <laughs> and I was still doing the job. But I <clears> definitely <throat> sense, you know, my kids were older now. Like early on, I had no kids, but now I got a family, I got kids. But yeah. that that's on a job I was getting paid that I could leave. You, you're not in that. You know, I, I say all the time, the volleys, you, you know, you're 63. You're still, you know, I'm not going to fires anymore, but you're still doing it. And you still, like you said before, which was the key to the whole thing. It's a perishable you know, idea. You cannot slow down. You cannot stop learning. You cannot because yep. that one time you don't do the right thing, it's going to bite you in the ass and you can get killed. Just like even when you do the right thing, you could still get killed. But if you're not learning and keeping up on it, you could still, you're definitely going to get killed. That was one of the quotes of Patty Brown. You can do this job absolutely the right way and still get killed. Yeah, absolutely. Man. There's a humility that comes with this job too. I, 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 I you know, to your point of being a boss, even, uh, you know, that your members uh, go home, uh, you know, I, I mean, the, the the responsibility, that's another skill. How do I, you know, how do I go to sleep at night knowing that I have the responsibility of these members in my hands? Yeah. Um, some people don't think about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, some right. people some just people think sit awake right. at night thinking about, you know, uh, their building inspection and pre-plan and training and drilling tomorrow, you know, so you know you have to finesse it all and make it smooth and and out here it's like because you never know who's going to show up who's, right. who's and you can make an assessment very quickly of what yeah. you think you can accomplish you might if you had you know this member and that member and this member you'd really be able to but maybe you right. don't have that member that night and um you know so you have to make an assessment very quickly it was i, I think i've said this <clears> on the show i think it was dan um murphy uh big murph from rescue two he had said to me we uh, when i was first promoted and he gave this <clears> analogy <throat> and it always stuck with me he said becoming a boss in the fire service is like first you're a fireman so the first analogy is you're going to the beach with your friends right so everybody's kind of on their own Right. You bring your own food, your own beer. You got your cooler, your chair. You want to go in the water, you go in the water. You want to go to the bathroom, you go to the bathroom. You want to go take a nap, you take a nap. <clears throat> when you get promoted to, to become a boss, mm. that's like you going to the beach with your young kids. Now you're like, uh, who, you got to do potty. Who's look out for the look out for the riptide. Don't go by the water. Don't go near the water. You need suntan lotion. Uh, she's burning. You need to get suntan lotion. And all of a sudden, you're worried. Yeah, about everything else you don't eat yeah. the whole day. You get burnt because you didn't put suntan lotion on. You don't get a nap in, right? I mean, it's just how it is, yeah. and it's that was a perfect analogy. Who was that? Like, I think it was Murph at uh, in Rescue Two. Yeah, that, that Murph, is yeah. that is classic, bro. Yeah. yeah, that is so funny, right? You know what, uh, Bob? Like, we, from doing this show, I mean, Louie and I are, are FDNY centric. From doing this show for the last three years, we really have gained a lot of respect for volunteers because they do it with a hell of a lot less and they're doing it on their own time. Like we go there as the FDNY and we'll beat it out with manpower, right? We'll just beat the <laughs> shit out of you. guys manpower. in the room. Is this yes. full <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't even know. Like it's yeah. These guys don't minutes. know who's showing up, how many guys are coming, you know, what they're going to get. It's, I've got, 
newfound respect for volunteers. And you most know, of this country is volunteer. You know? Yeah. Um, I'll never know what it's like to have 7,500 guys out in the street, like with their <laughs> thumb up their ass, you know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, Pat used to say it, you know, Pat Brown, when he, when he lived out here, and he says, well, I'll tell you one thing about this place. He says, if this place gets going, FDNY ain't coming, you know? <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, it is. Listen, I, I watched uh, uh, Bayshore Fire Department the other day operate at a uh, turnover, you know, and I'm telling you, I mean, you know, bang, bang, boom. Uh, it all depends on the leadership and, and the commitment, and a lot of times it's it's – absolutely extraordinary to have somebody from your job who is in your uh volunteer department i know there's a lot of members from your job uh who are you know and you exponentially get just such great instruction we had a member uh from your job who was a chief of ours at one time uh so you just you know you want to conduct yourself as uh as you know as professionally as possible and and get the job done because again you know uh you can't say well you know you know uh jimmy's the florist in real life he didn't really know how to take a door you know uh, you know uh, you can't expect him to take a door you know and it's like are you fucking kidding me you know i called 911 i didn't want flowers i wanted the fucking door you know, so anyway uh i never thought about that like, uh, well the chief no, works at blockbuster full time like, and now he's the chief what movie that was like saving private ryan right he was a teacher or something he was the captain of the crew yeah he was a, he was teacher. a teacher i'm a school oh, teacher oh my god i yeah. never thought about that yeah, yeah. Well, i don't say if a dopey actor can do it <laughs> guy, right? hey the guy with the nozzle he was in uh yeah, yeah, he was a tombstone. Hey, he took a shot to the head. Isn't that Robocop? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm still Jordan. You don't put the fire out, you know? Yeah. So, it is what it is. But I, I, I've always been actually very grateful that I got to see this part of, of life and, and have this uh, service. A lot of people, you know, they, they want to help and they want to do something. Nobody knows what to do. Do you know what I mean? And everybody talks a, a pretty good game and yeah, they have very good true. intentions. But to have come to that point in my life and be able bodied and be able to do it was really an honor. And, and I was very happy and, and, and it never lost on me. Do you know what I mean? It was a wonderful saying. I just saw recently, it says, you know, uh, the fire service is one of the last honorable bastions in this country. One of us represents all of us act accordingly. And I, you know, I, subscribe, awesome. I subscribe to that very much, uh, act accordingly. Do you know what I mean? And um, and just knowing, getting to know, like again, baseball players, football, they don't fucking nobody. Oh, oh you're an actor. Oh yeah, you've been. You know. But meeting guys from your job, it's just a very strange. It's a different, um, uh, like a different context. You shake a guy's hand who went to work in the 1960s and 70s. Oh my god. You know, it's like holy shit. You know, it's like this guy isn't at the gym and eating granola. He fucking went to work. You know what I mean? He could crush you like a, on a five floor. Absolutely. Crush you like a bug. So that's fascinating to me. Uh, that type of um, uh, a That's why we do this show, because we get to talk to these guys. I, we're, listen, I've seen We're like little kids uh, on this thing, listening to these guys. Uh, I, I can't even... I don't, That's why I'm sitting there to my wife and I, I'm like, my stomach hurts. And she's like, what's the matter? I'm like, these guys want to talk to me. I might owe one of them money. I don't know. Why do they want to talk to me? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, since you know, Sally and Johnny up and find his checkbook, boss, you know what I mean? <laughs> but no, I, I, I take it, uh, I, I take it seriously. The fire service, I, I try not to take myself very seriously, but, um, uh, but I take, I take it seriously. I do. I, and I would leave that for the other members to say about me, um, uh, and my service. Uh, I hope I, I, I take it seriously. Uh, and have been, you know, good to the new members and always try to, you know, train them up as well as possible. And, um, you know, uh, give them every edge, you know, because uh, pretty soon, you know, a lot of us age out and yeah, it, yeah. it's a really hard thing. I don't even know how guys from your job, I, you know, when they say things like they taught me everything except how to retire, do you know what I mean? I can, I can understand the, the, the gap, the, you know, people in the military say, it, but, you know, he might have a one tour or two tours, uh, not even come into the life and death situations that you guys have. Uh, so it's really just, um, uh, uh, again, like with the military and the fire service, you know, you guys have had careers 20, 30, you know, 39, 41 years. Uh, you don't find, you, you might find. Chief Haid. We just, he, he, Chief Haid. Uh, uh, my man. brother just retired with 45 years. 45. And he, and he doesn't even know I've ever heard. Yeah. yeah. He, I mean, Where did he retire out of? Uh, he was a 
deputy chief in the 14th deputy. division. Yeah. Wow. And he has the same same act accordingly. That's one of his biggest. His uh, uh, um, act like a professional. He says all the time, just be a professional. Drives me thing. nuts. Yeah. You know, guy opened up, guy, you know, not paying attention. You know, it's like a dog. You know, it's like you look at that where your box is, where your address is. You just <clears> never <throat> take your eyes off of it. And and but Burke, it's just an uh, an automatic firearm. It doesn't matter. Because someday it won't be, and you'll you'll you'll, you'll need that focus. So there's just these little things in the culture that are, I think, getting lost. Because if you start talking culture with people, they don't want to hear that part of no. it. But that's the glue, I think. Um, that oh, uh, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, you know, holds it together. And um, you know, I'm not a buff per se. I wouldn't say I'm a buff, but I'm fascinated by it, and I'm very interested in it. You know, you see guys like Stockton or Gary or Baltimore going to work. There's this. There's this uh, I'm always uh, pointing this out. There's these guys, you know, Detroit, this one account on, on, and these guys are like, I'll tell you, they're one pace in Detroit. Oh, hum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're just ho hum. And you yeah, put, yeah. I'll they, be there. They, they, they're getting the job done. Nobody's yeah. running around like scream, you know. Uh, Bob, I saw a video. I think <clears> we've had a few Detroit guys on that were absolutely incredible in their 70s. Right? Talk about incredible. I, there was a video of a guy, and I've said this on the show, where it's I think it's taken from across the street, <clears throat> like from the roof, looking down. And it's a brick building. The whole There's fire out every window. There's no buildings on the side of it. It's got to be 80 feet deep. The whole first floor. There's fire out 10 windows on both sides. The guy, exactly what you said, he takes the line off. He gets up to the front door. There's like a, you know, uh, a plywood there. He's by himself. Wow. He's by himself. The guy's coming around pumping, you know. Here comes the water. Pries off the car, the, uh, the the plywood. You see him, you know, just test it. Gets down, puts his mask on. It, like you said, a whole hump thing. All of a sudden, you see the first two windows. White smoke coming out. Fire coming out there. White smoke coming out. The guy goes um, through yeah. 80 feet. He goes <laughs> all the way to the back. Right. Like, Is he by himself? Just, he was by himself. I mean, another company shows up, you know, a couple guys get off and they get up on the line probably. But I mean, to start out by yourself, like, like you said, but that's a guy who's been doing that consistently. It, it, it speaks to the volume of work they're getting. Oh yeah, no doubt. I mean, no uh, doubt. That's the other thing that freaks me out sometimes, you know, when you say things like, eh, you know, I'm not even going to say it, but um, when you don't go to work a lot, you know, and that can freak you out too. Yeah, it freaks yeah, yeah. me out. It freaks me out because I'm always like in my head. Well, that's why you, you know. need the old guys to talk about stuff and you have to drill about stuff. And, you know, you know, listen, that's like that in the FDNY too. You know, you're not going yeah. to fires every day either. So I uh, love the concept and I use it in my life, the little things. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, your gear, your personal gear. And, and, and I try to explain, you know, you have to have your shit together because it's 10 seconds here and 15 seconds there and 20 seconds. You're going to need that 45 seconds later. You know what I mean? Yeah, it could yeah. be, no doubt. You know, uh, the 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 you know uh, lifesaver lifesaver absolutely. Gons, yeah. I wanted to, to talk about the helmet. If uh, that's another ready. thing, I don't want to. I'll make sure we talk about that. Throw it up there, Gonzapotamus. It's it's coming, brother. There it is. Yes. Yeah, so tell tell us about this, about Bob. That. Oh, so um, <clears throat> so we uh, we uh, so we found Pat Brown. And we, um, as per Pat's wishes, he wanted to be cremated. He wanted his ashes spread in Central Park. And, you know, the three truck guys, they took it a little farther. <laughs> we went into Central Park one night, two o'clock in the morning, and we planted like a 28 foot maple tree. And we had a headstone, like a, a stone. It said, you know, to pa Captain Patrick Brown and this and that and everything. And um, so, anyway, the, the, par the parks, you know, the, precinct called us next day so you gotta get all this shit out of here you can't plant trees in the middle right <laughs> I think, uh, <laughs> but i'll tell you we had there was dateline nbc <clears throat> with us and the the poor night manager comes around and he sees 20 guys and he goes can i help you i'm not can't go i still feel like i'm gonna get somebody in trouble but um they said oh you didn't get the memo yeah we we got we got permission to plant the tree here and he goes you know he's it's like two o'clock in the morning <laughs> and oh no, it's it's fine. And uh, don't worry about so it. anyway, uh, he he says to the Dateline NBC guys, well, "Let me see the camera." I like to say congratulations and I love you, fireman. So we got him. Uh, but anyway, the precinct called the next day. And we had to get it out of there. So 
we went to this bar that three truck used to go to Finity's on uh, 13th street, and third Avenue. And Mike, Pat's brother reaches into his bag and he gives me Pat's helmet. And I'm like, what the, f what are you, he goes, Oh, you helped with the family, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm not taking this. Oh yes, you are. And it's like six o'clock in the morning. I'm like, okay, Mike, I'll take it. Goes, so anyway, I, I brought it back to three truck and uh, we put it up on the wall. And then like two weeks later, I get a box. It's the helmet again. I sent it back. They sent it back to me. I says, I'm not taking it. I don't, <clears throat> I, it, it's not no place in my house. But ultimately, it, it was in my house for months until uh, the 9-11 Museum called. And uh, they said, we understand you have Pat Brown's helmet. I said, yes. So they said, we'd like to display it with the three-truck rig. And I said, uh, let me get back to you. So I call, uh, I suppose Mike Moran was the senior man. And I said, uh, listen, they want this helmet next to the three-truck rig, but I don't want to give it because I don't want to take thunder away from anybody else. You know, he goes, oh, no, no, there's going to be this. There's gonna I said, are you sure? He says, yeah. So... I go downtown and I, uh, th there was like a hundred pages, you know, on loan in perpetuity to the, I says, take it. I don't have to sign anything. So they put it on, uh, they put it on display there. Uh, I think it says something like, uh, from Robert Burke and family and from the Brown family. And, um, that's how I was very happy because that's where it should be. You yeah. Know? Yeah. No doubt. I'm happy that yeah. it found its way there. That's cool. awesome. Uh, but guys, before uh, we move any further, let's, um, uh, do all the photos of the of the big uh, celebrities that have come down to, uh, and we'll talk about the, uh, at the, oh, the foundation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay ready? Here we go. You good? <laughs> start right? off. Yeah, we start off with a good one. <laughs> oh, she's not hot on the eyes. My so uh, she... my she used to be my girlfriend on television. You That's can... right. You were the IG guy, right? You guys had a I was the internal yeah. affairs guy, and uh -huh. uh, a bunch of years ago, she said to me when she grabbed me by the face and she's like look at this face and uh, i said what are you doing and she goes you're going to be my love interest and i go i'm the most hated character on the show how is that going <laughs> to and, and she goes no it'll work it'll work and, <clears throat> and so we they you know i think ice t said something like that's going to be a slow boat to turn around but um <laughs> but anyway it, uh, it, it, uh, a great line oh yeah <laughs> that's so, a uh, freaking great line so anyway yeah they you know uh uh, Ed Tucker, the internal affairs guy, and uh, you know Olivia Benson. Uh, <clears throat> and we became uh, you know boyfriend and girlfriend on the show. She's she, I can't say enough for this woman. I mean, she is uh, just uh, she's the force of nature, uh, Mariska Hargitay. And um, so they uh, our mother and father were um, Mickey uh, Hargitay and Mickey uh, James right. Man Jane, Jane Mansfield. Mansfield. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> um, wow. And, uh, so. Uh, so Dennis would invite her to the uh, Academy to the rock uh, each year for, since he's been doing it and his schedules and everything. But this year she showed up and uh, she did everything. I think she pushed the line. She really repelled off the, the six stories. Um, you know, she was cutting cars, putting out car fires. So she had a ball. She was, she was all awesome. in. Yeah. And she is like, you know, her right ankle is like ace hardware. Right? I mean, it's got like six or seven screws in there and oh, sure. you know, she's got, but she did everything. She was she was all about it. So it was great to see her. Big boost to the guys, and um, yeah, it was it was great to see sure. her. Well, right. she got in there, guns. Pull up another one. Here we go. Here we there go. He right. is. Oh, we he know was... that guy. He was a fireman too. Fifty-five engine. Quit the chingo. Quit the chingo. chingo. Yeah. yeah, I can never say that shit. No, <laughs> my brother was a lieutenant in Quanta Chingo. Fifty-five. Chingo. Oh no, kid. Yeah. Yeah. Great guy. I saw him down at the side of the World Trade Center. Uh, we were going in with uh, elements mm -hmm. of three truck, and, he, and I hear, "Hey, hey, hey!" <laughs> and 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 he, I, I go, "Hey, how you doing?" And he goes, "Good. How you doing?" I said, "Good." And you kind of kept up with your group. And uh, he said to he went through probie school with John Moran. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Uh, a sock. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Um, so Mike Moran <laughs> comes to me. He goes, "Ah." Shemmy wants to know if you're a fucking actor who became a fireman or a fireman who became an actor. Right? <laughs> so uh, I, I, I wasn't a volley then at all. I was just uh, go, went down with uh, three truck. But he's a great nice guy. Stuff. That guy. You, 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 you're in touch with him still, or what? You, uh, you, no, you, I see him here right at the thing at the uh, the, uh. the thing. He's very involved with uh, friends of firefighters, I believe. Yeah, we talked. Yeah, Nancy. Uh, yeah. Trying to get the show for crying out loud. Hey, how did I get on here anyway? To tell you the truth. How did you get yeah. on? Yeah. When I was in Indianapolis, your okay. chief uh, gave uh, – well, he wouldn't give me your number. Oh. I, he said he was from Fire Island. I said, yeah. oh. 
So is John, uh, so Robert Burke. He goes, yeah. He goes, I, I can't give him your, you know, I can't give you his number. Yeah. But I can give him your number. And he gave me your, your But he just he gave and, Jeremy the number right before you. And then I oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Oh, bro. Riffy's on his game tonight, bro. Coops. Get out of there, Coops. Get out of there. <laughs> Poor bastard. Ow, wow. my ass still hurts, bro. Ow. <laughs> Uh, and then we got this guy. And then we got this guy. Look at I this was guy. that guy. Jeff Bezos, uh, his brother Mark, uh, was actually honored by uh, the FDNY Foundation. Uh, these guys are, you have no idea how generous they are to FDNY and the FDNY Foundation. Uh, Mark is a is a captain in Scarsdale. Uh, say what you want. The guy gets out of bed in the middle of the night for strangers uh, wow. as a volley. Um, Jeff came. Uh, Dude's in fantastic shape. Nothing seemed to bother him. Pushed lines, uh, uh, you know, brought bundles up, coupled them, went to work. Uh, so, yeah, quiet. Did he any hot Didn't babes he... with him? Did he bring any hot babes? <laughs> he just got engaged, they were saying, right? Yeah, I think uh, somebody's mentioned That's that. That's what Mike was saying. Oh, yeah. Mike said that, right? Good, good. Yeah, so good. listen, uh, me uh, and you? great guy. Yeah, you, what an idiot. What an idiot. <laughs> good. Good, more for me and you. You want some meatloaf? Ah, the meatloaf! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> you fine. got that Just one, huh, bro? It. Good for you. Yeah, guys. I don't think I have that one. Do I have that one? Hey, Ma! <laughs> the meatloaf! We want it now! Ma! The meatloaf! I never know Fuck! what she's doing back there. <laughs> My face hurts. All uh, right, well, you got another one? God's I got one it? more. I got this last guy right here. Who's that guy? Roger oh. Bell, uh, commissioner of the NFL, another guy, all about it, suited up, uh, geared up, uh, pushed lines, uh, did every test that was uh, presented to him. Uh, I think this was last year, uh, 2022. He said he was uh, a real deal too, right? He was no no Real bullshit. deal, no right? bullshit, quiet, yeah. made no fuss. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, here's the thing, showed up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, oh, you're going to be firefighting. He has no idea what he's going to be doing. And then all of a sudden, somebody Next throws thing, You know, he's hanging off a rope. <laughs> yeah, right. like, you don't, don't have to sure. do that. Like you said before, he doesn't have to do that. He didn't right? have to do it. And I'm sure, you know, uh, he was very generous in, in, in other respects. Uh, I think they have to pay X amount of money to even – well, maybe some are invited. Uh, but mm -hmm. there are other corporations that pay, you know, uh, I don't even know which corporations. Ford, I know, sends a contingent of people uh, – other corporations send executives. They pay money that these executives come and and, and join in in the day. And when does that it's happen? Right. When, when does that it happen? happens every year, May fifth or the first Friday of yeah. May. Oh, uh, so you just you just who'd you have there just recently? Uh, well, we had Mariska Hargitay, we had Chris oh, okay. Maloney, um, Steve Buscemi, uh, Billy Crudup, uh, Rachel Ray makes the breakfast, makes the lunch, makes come the dinner. Come on, yeah. Oh, forget about it. I have she videotape of her. You know, uh, uh, going off the roof. You know, even being lower down. I and it was one of my guys from my department. I bring a, a couple of my members with me, um, and I said, "Whatever you do, fucking don't drop her, oh, please, <laughs> Jesus." Uh, but uh, uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, she was great, and um, John Slattery, um, uh, Juliana Margulies, uh, Michael J. Fox. Um, Michael J. Uh, Fox, uh, really? Michael J. Fox, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Adam Ferrara. Uh, uh, Lenny Clark, uh, John Skirty. Wow, a lot um, of people. A lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, um, some heavy hitters. Dennis Leary's uh, crew show up to support, right. and you know, a lot, a lot of times, I think they get a little intimidated. They don't want to show. You know, it's like, well, can I just write a check and get a drink and some hors d'oeuvres? Not today. Uh, <laughs> today you were today. getting the. Uh, you do it. And it's guys, great. It's the fantastic. guys talk about it all the time. Like our guys, right. I, I've heard a lot about that. Yeah, and I get to see guys on your job that I've known over the years, and it's always nice to catch up with people. And um, who else? Throw some names out there. Who you got? Oh, uh, well, there was a great friend of mine. I'll tell you a story. Dennis Leary calls me once. Uh, he uh, he's across the street from my house on the Upper West Side, and he goes, oh, "I'm having dinner with some firemen. Come over." I come over. There's some guy looking at me the whole dinner. He looks like a pirate. I'm like, and he goes to me, "You go by Bobby." I said, "Yeah." He goes, "You got a twin brother, Billy?" I said, "Yeah." He goes, "Your parents are from what are you?" writing a fucking book and he, and he goes it's me eddie and i go eddie he goes eddie me and he was a lieutenant in the 22 truck and i said oh shit eddie how are you and uh uh i've heard that name leary goes uh he goes do you know every fireman in this i said no this guy i grew up with so anyway 
his he went moved back to Ireland for years and then he came back to America went on your job and uh, and I I hadn't seen the guy in since I was you know 12 years old and um so anyway he was he was a storied guy very competent uh, uh fireman and uh uh so he was he was uh out there uh we used to joke nobody could say tactical like eddie me and i'm out of fucking tactical you know uh, so uh so he was there he loved it there uh he retired out of 22 truck i believe and um uh, uh so he passed away um uh, oh, yeah yeah uh uh, his son is on the job now, actually Emmett, and um, uh, who was it? The uh, Tommy McGoldrick. Uh, do you know him? He's a great guy. He was in charge of Burns out there. Uh, there's a bunch of guys. I know. Him. Uh, I know. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of guys. Uh, um, I'm trying to think now. Uh, uh, Chief Lafamina said he knew you. Oh, uh, Freddie, Freddie Lafamina said he knew you. You know who <laughs> I'm buddies with, and. I, I have my children who can attest to this. I could be in Lowe's. I could be in Home Depot. Back in Lowe's. Johnny LaFamina would. Yeah. Johnny, what are you doing? He was always <laughs> right there. I, said, I thought I was getting talking. pitched. I thought I was getting a pitch. Me. He goes, Mark, what are you doing? I said, I'm just looking. Like, you know, and, uh, but Johnny and I, would, we would always laugh. We'd always see each other. He's uh, one of those guys you see all the time. He, he moved to Myrtle Beach, uh, but he was just a, a great guy. I'm, I was at a seminar once and some captain was talking about being at rescue three and who was his mentor. The guy who was always buttoned up, the guy who was always turtled up, the guy who was always, he was always right there, right, ready to go to work, right, just a 110%, uh, John LaFamina. Yeah, and yeah. and I, I remember calling John, I says, why? You're becoming more famous than me, Mr. LaFamina. <laughs> so uh, anyway, he a great guy. Uh, That's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, so uh, different guys, um, and then I see different guys uh, with with uh, Chief DiBenardo's uh, uh, foundation. Kevin Yos was the one. Never who, heard of him. Never heard of him. <laughs> oh, do you know him? Oh, we yeah, know. We know. Kevin. We know. Yeah. Um, and he was the one who said perishable skills. That you know, oh, I, I remember when he used that. He used that expression. Um, Don't give him any credit. Don't give. Nah, him right? no, no, no. <laughs> I love Yost. A lot of these guys, you guys put up the thing that I was going to be on tonight. My phone blew up. Oh, hey, bro, you're going to be right. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I hope you're all having a fucking good laugh. <laughs> you're going to be on with those assholes tonight. <laughs> Did Jeremy text you? <laughs> oh, uh, damn. Like, hey, you son oh. of a bitch. <laughs> Dick. Uh, come on. Nah, I'm, I'm good. Come on. I say, no, I got nothing. Yeah, nothing dude. Bad All to two say guys watch. Shut up to my new friend. <laughs> <laughs> Both guys who were watching the show texted you. <laughs> You're an ass. I can't. I can't stop. Oh I got to say one thing, Bob. Uh, for a guy who's a, a Hollywood actor, you sound more like a fireman than you do a Hollywood actor. Nah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I can drop in and drop out. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's not, uh, no, that's not phony, bro. That's not I, acting. Like I, the way you, the, just your knowledge of the fire service and how you talk, you sound like a fireman. Well, it, it all depends on how you want to play the game. That's all. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm smart enough. My job is to hold a mirror up. Do you know what I mean? When you're standing around playing the head of the first Marine division who actually lived and is revered by Marines and you, like, I'm pissing my pants. I'm like, what am I going to do here? So it's, it's, when like like i said my first job that i ever pushed i'm like this is you know this is the real thing and and uh it depends on what you want to bring to it and i i've been awfully lucky by virtue of the guys who have trained me and uh continue to train me and the members i work with the people in the whole uh, uh fire service it's a, it's very honorable in this day and age everybody's at each other's throats and you know, if these tones go, I don't ask gender, race. Cre I don't. We you never. Bingo! Thank you. Know, thank you. Know, you know what I mean? It's like that. It's it's a very pure endeavor to be a part of in this day and age because everybody's whacking each other, and um, so I, I feel very uh, grateful and privileged to to be a part of that and to uh, uh, to have had that experience in a million years. I can tell you, gentlemen, that I would never in a million years thought I would ever be uh, doing this. I just never occurred to me. Never occurred to me, and by virtue of Patty, his this is I keep this is his uh, this was his uh, his, uh you know, Sony so picture, yeah, that it was, yeah, and and 
And, uh, you know, when you're looking at that guy, looking back at yeah, you, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? no doubt, man. Uh, everything is in his, uh, you know, his brother used to say uh, he would have gotten an awful <laughs> kick up out of you, like talking fire service. And I remember no he'd, he'd be saying something like, oh, good job. And I'm like, what job? He goes, oh, the job we had in Harlem. And I was like, good job. I said, I'm watching the news. Ten families lost their houses. How is that a good job? I didn't make any connection to the to the speak to anything. He goes, right. well. We put the fire out and nobody got hurt. And I'm like, oh, okay. But, um, you know, uh, but there were certain things that he did say about Vietnam, about his training, about his experience there, about, uh, you know, having to go to work with the fire patrol before he became, you know, a, uh, about that. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, and then, okay, the politics on the job, do you know what I mean? And, mm. uh, you know, I, yeah. I'd listen to him and I'd say, your job sounds worse than the fucking mafia. I swear to God, everybody's like, got a, like the night of the long knives, you know, and, uh, Mickey uh the clam. I mean, <laughs> Louis the lip. well, not just the, 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 the apes, but just the way pe different people are. Oh, this guy yeah, hates yeah. me. This guy really hates me. This yeah, guy yeah. really, really hates me. It's like, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, but he, he was very dedicated to the job. I, I, you know, and he was a guy, I believe, um, uh, uh, who really, really took the job very seriously, lost people, lost friends, and just was sick and tired of that. If he thought it didn't have to happen, if guys operated, you know, assertively, but safely, uh, you know, know their job, uh, uh, decent people, um, you know, uh, he was a wonderful uh, uh, mentor to have in my memory. Do you know what I mean? Because he informs my fire service now, uh, just in terms of the the yeah, way hell yeah 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 you know yeah. you you you're told you're shown you're taught how it's supposed to be done hey i got an idea why don't you do it that way um because you know just the little things that sometimes that uh that piss you off and again you're a volley you're a seasonal you're understaffed you know uh or you're not doing you yeah, know there's a lot big of operations. Off, believe me yeah yeah Going but, on 17 automatic <clears throat> arms in a row or uh ems or all the bullshit that comes with that absolutely so mm -hmm. um yeah i mean my my lieutenant patty lee he was in 124 truck in the 70s when bushwick was burning that's where 124 the taco truck he's in the chat he said you see how good the show is when you have an irishman on ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sneaky Irish it's, my, it's my birthright <laughs> it's my birthright it's it's, well, well, uh, i i heard a story about patty um patty brown uh, that he was uh, close with John Drennan, the guy who, and that, uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but what I had heard was that after he was in the hospital for so long that, that Patty had said to him, you can go, brother. Like, you can you go, can go like it's okay. It was actually on Dateline and they actually have him telling right. him. I'll, Pat, I'll, Pat in his own words said that, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right, and that to me is like, dude, that gets me every time, bro. Because yeah, like, he said he was gonna, they were, they were gonna take care of take the care of his kids, right. take that's, care of your kids. It's okay to go. Kids would be okay. It's okay. To yeah. Go. It was a weird thing because Pat wasn't in that house. He was up at sixty nine engine at the time, and there was something that happened. Whereas Pat was a bachelor, didn't have a family. He could be assigned to uh, Vina Drennan, uh, you know, uh, and 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 the company heard of the burn unit and expedite things because people kind of knew who Pat was. Let's say. Uh, I believe he was a captain at the time, so he could expedite things for the family through the department. I think there was some consternation about him not having been, what was it, a uh, four truck? I can't remember. Uh, the, the John uh, Drennan? John Drennan. Five, it, was it was five truck. Five truck, rather, I'm sorry. Um, but that kind of went the by the way. And um, so, yeah, he did very well by the Drennan family and um, – uh, you know, Vina would tell you to this day, I believe, that he was a complete gentleman and expedited anything and really cared for John. Uh, and again, he didn't have to go home to a wife or kids or anything. He, he could be there a lot. And um, so, yeah, uh, that's the other part of your duty on your job that, you know, you know, pushing a line is, is, is a lot easier sometimes than, than being by a man's bedside. 40 days. It's like biblical that he would survive. Uh, I listened to your podcast to a fireman who uh, was at that fire, Watt Street, and um, oh, Hank, my wife. you know, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, what can I say? It's just, uh, uh, yeah. He 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 said those words to John because he relayed those in an interview himself. Right. 
it's just an amazing testament to what we'll do for each other and what we do, you know, the brotherhood, really. People don't understand how strong it really is. It's just it's amazing. It can be, and I've seen it with my own eyes. Um, we had a fire here uh, October. Uh, we went all night. It was a semi-large volume of fire, uh, and then, uh, you know, we took up and cleaned up, and uh, at 6.30 in the morning, we were all in a van at 7.30 for a member's funeral. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, we turned out. Everybody turned out for that funeral. Um, these types of uh, uh, mores and, and, and actions, are they're going by the wayside. That kind of honor, that kind of dignity, that kind of respect for each other and, and for, for a job or vac a vocation. Everything's getting like water dumped on it, getting diluted. Right. You know what I mean? And so to be a part of a service like that in, in this day and age is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a privilege. No, it's good. I, I'm glad to hear it. You know, I talk to guys, you, you had to have be missing an arm, like to miss a funeral, a funeral. Or, I mean, you had to have, there was really no excuse almost really. So yeah, we went up to that, uh, young man, Jared Lloyd, Lieutenant Jared Lloyd up in spring Valley. And, uh, you know, it was a cold day and, uh, uh, you know, his little two little boys that he, he left behind, you know, the pastor pointed up to the stands. It was outdoors at a um, at a baseball stadium. He said, look at these men. These are your family now. Mm. I've seen it. I've seen it time and time again. I've seen it also people fall by the wayside in terms of mission fatigue, I call it sometimes. And um, but with most families, if you're close to them, you know, uh, uh, and there's m other members who I was close to over the years whose family I stay in touch with. I'm not going to mention them now but um yeah it's honorable do you know what i mean it's like it's I, you know not to get all you know touchy feely but i believe it's why we're here to help each other and um mm. you know Look at that guy yeah um that was uh my fire department did a warrior appreciation event for many years we would we would have 30 to 60 um uh veterans come out uh it was great. It was a great event. Um, I remember one year we voted uh, to put cash. Like we give them knapsacks with golf balls and all sorts of shit. One year we said, "Fuck that! Let's just give them." Well, you know, little party favors. And one year we voted to give them money like this. So, <laughs> so we put the money in the knapsack, and guys like, "Yeah," I said, "No, no, no! Don't lose the knapsack like this." So they look in and they're like, "Okay," you know. Holy um, shit! So uh, it was a. A wonderful event, and it was uh, very well attended. The community here, um, uh, two lieutenants who were friends of mine from your job came out one year, and uh, they were very impressed. And um, we still do it on a on a very modified, you know, like this summer I had uh, 12 veterans' families come out just for the day for lunch. We buy them lunch. We go to the beach. Uh, we buy kids, their kids' uh uh, you know, gifts and toys and ice cream, just to show that we're still plugged in with the veteran community. Um, even though, again, you know, people are like, oh, you know, I'm not going to give as much, but this department still turns out for veterans. Cool. I, you said no nah, about this guy. I said no. Nah, I like this guy. You said no, 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 no. No, stop. Uh, I you said you, you was okay. Saw that he was on, when you saw that he was on NFR, you're like, we got to get rid of this guy. I don't. I can't have him. <laughs> What are you talking okay. about me? <laughs> said, what are you talking about me? <laughs> you said to me your exact words, but we can't be sloppy seconds. I don't know what that means. No, but... I did not say that. You said that. You said I said no I lube. I thought I heard. Oh, bing, 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 bing. Oh shit! I can't get it. Oh, that's right. I already drank. Say the secret word. Win a hundred dollars. You know what I mean? What uh, <laughs> did you want to talk about? A couple of the. Um... Websites and stuff. Yeah, foundation. Uh, throw them up there, Gans. What do um, we got? This one. Uh, well, the we, Joey Foundation. Joey D. The Joey D. Bernardo Foundation. Uh, Chief D. Bernardo. Uh, he's got a just just the most unbelievable guys I've learned from. Uh, how to conduct yourself as a man. How to keep your word. How to raise money for uh, other firefighters who don't have anything. No, a, a guy in Baltimore just told me that he got um, bailout gear last year. I'm like, wait a minute, Baltimore. He goes, yeah, we don't have bailout gear. I'm like, you don't have bailout gear in Baltimore? These guys have gone to four or five jobs while we've been talking. You know? Oh, no and, doubt. Yeah. And they, they don't have bailout gear. I was shocked. If you That's want crazy, it, you right? buy it yourself. And um, 
so uh, it not only that is how do you deploy it? How do you use it? How do you train up in it? And um, so Chief D with his um, foundation is entirely effective. I remember one year we were out east at some firehouse and they were having a seminar and and guys from Hawaii. And I'm like, where are you guys from? They're like, Hawaii. I'm like, are you? You know, I, I was like, you're either the most dedicated fireman or you got the best wives in the world. I'll let you come to and and we asked them, where do you stay? And they're like, Oh, we have a hotel in South Jamaica. I'm like, oh Jesus. <laughs> so, uh, um, and everybody who wanted a uh, like a, a, a gift that night gave it to the Hawaii guys. Um, but Chief D didn't stop there. He turned it into uh, uh, a day of hands-on training. And uh, so, you know, two days of hands-on training. Yeah, right. He could just um, give you. He could just give you the, the rope, and that's it. Right. He could give you the he rope, and that's it. Right. That's not what's happening. And right. so, guys are getting trained up. The Suffolk County Fire Academy. All of the instructors turn out. Like everybody comes in on their day off, on their nickel, on their, you know. And um, I mean, it's extensive. You got. I, I can't remember the, the actual yeah, numbers, but you got it. hundreds of guys getting trained. Hundreds of guys going home and training. So again, you can either be on the job, into the job. You can talk about oh the fire service, and or you can actually be you know uh, going out there and training up guys. It's funny. Uh, this year I missed the the Long Island uh, uh, Expo. No, no, no. Uh, okay. The uh, the Joey D thing out east. Oh, oh right, so right, right, right. After three years, I called Chief and I says, "Listen, I can't come." He goes, "What's wrong?" And I said, "I got fucking COVID." He goes, "Oh yeah." And I go, yeah. He goes, how bad are you? <laughs> He's like, Gee, I don't want to get anybody sick, you know. Um, I was at a convention, and my wife goes, how was the convention? It was one of these actor conventions. I never went to in my life. And uh, she said, how was it? I said, if I don't get COVID from this thing, I'm never getting it. Well, I got it, you know. <laughs> so I couldn't go to the Chief D thing. And then they had uh, another seminar down in Texas. Yeah, Texas. Guys, guys want to learn, you know, especially from you guys. You know, you guys are the New York Yankees teaching baseball. You know, it's uh, and and you know, to a man, I really never met an instructor, not one, who wasn't an absolute gentleman. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Absolute professional, quiet professional, and you know, each in their own expertise. Um, you know, and and that's admirable. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Me, no to me, um, so uh, so yeah, the Joe D. Bernardo Foundation and Dennis Leary, you know, kind of uh, got them going. Uh, LearyFirefighter uh, dot org. So Leary has bought boats for New Orleans. We went down there. We did, I don't even know how many trips. We brought the New York City District Council of Carpenters, the, the Carpenters Union. We said, we'll give you, we'll, we'll fly you down. We'll fly you home. We'll put you up. We'll give you one meal. You come down and you restore these firehouses after Katrina. Well, not only did they restore the firehouses, but they were running, you know, wire. They were sweating pipe. They were doing everything. And the funny thing about New Orleans is like, you know, we were like, don't you need a code? Like, you know, and they're like, oh, no, that's Uncle Jimmy. He's, you know, they were letting us do, put the place back together fantastically. And, you know, Frigidaire and would give us stuff and Nautilus. And we we're like, you want a weight room here, a workout room? Yeah. You know, so uh, it was unbelievable. Um, I still, when I go down to New Orleans, I just, you know, I was like. That's great. It's it's unbelievable what he did for the New Orleans. Uh, the city ray nagan i'll never forget they said it would take 10 years and 10 million uh leary put 14 firehouses back into operation in 20 months for less than two million dollars and that's a lot of time on the phone a lot of pleading with people um and for your job uh command post um uh, uh <clears throat> you know i was mentioning before uh high rise uh you guys didn't have a high rise uh simulator apparently uh um, um, we did not you know uh flashover um uh I think that that building has the rollover yeah upstairs it. yeah yeah, yeah. That's the uh, rollover. the flashover says, is the container the liz hopper uh it's dedicated to this woman liz hopper who used to run all of the administrative for dennis <clears throat> leary she was like a workhorse she passed away of a heart attack That's um awesome. yeah so he's um and for worcester you know uh on the grounds of mm. Uh, the Worcester Cold Storage Fire. Dennis built it's the most massive firehouse you have ever seen. It's like, you know, rescue, two trucks, three engines, oh, ambulances, shit, chief, battalion. Mm. I mean, there's so it's <clears throat> massive. You gotta like walk if like you're at a airport. It's so big. And that's a testimony to his devotion to the fire service. Again, 
you know, somebody can give lip service and said, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to have a 50 50 for the fireman. And yeah, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit. That <laughs> he built this massive multi-million dollar and they built a training facility, you know, like a real brick and mortar training facility. You got this guy, Steve Sandalaguchi. I can't remember what the oh, uh, me, yeah. affordable, affordable towers. That guy with the oh, a guy in Texas, he's in Texas. Yeah. Too, right. Yeah. So he's we're trying to get him on board with uh, with Dennis because it's very effective training for municipalities mm. that don't have a lot of money. Uh, so yeah, Leary Firefighter, uh, you know, supplementing the De Bernardo Foundation. Uh, you know, uh, I, I think Dennis has to come on the show to talk about all those things, bro. I'm just, I'm just he doesn't, throw like that. he doesn't oh, toot his horn a lot. I, I'll tell him. I said, you know, these are the guys. <laughs> Tell them we treated you well. Come on, listen, <laughs> come on the show and toot your horn all you want, bro. Toot, toot, toot. You know we'll what I'm saying? Horn for you. Well, you I'll know, toot your horn. Uh, yeah, I, listen, I, I always let him speak for you himself. You know what? Tell you him. guys are very similar personality, too. Like, you, you guys are pretty similar. Like, when I sat down with him, it's the same thing. Like <clears> His mother really and father is. were from County Kerry, and, and, and my parents were from County Galway. And the first time I met his mother, I was dressed in my class A's. I went up to Metal Day in um boston with him and he threw me to his family like to run interference you know keep them busy <laughs> and, and his his mother goes hey mom this is bobby burke uh and she says hello in her irish accent and he goes bobby where's your family from i said galway she goes oh yeah carrie's better and he's like hi you only know the guy 20 minutes so, uh, uh, we were brought up it's that uh old irish you might screw around on somebody else's watch, but you're not screwing around on mine kind of uh, upbringing. Uh, you need more. Yeah, we get we get along very well. Uh, there are certain things uh, that in our upbringing that we talk about that nobody mm. else would understand. It'd be like bringing up, you know, Italian or Polish. Yeah, yeah, of course, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, I was listening to a guy tell a story. Uh, uh, he was cooking for a chief or rather Captain Downey at the time, and he put uh, sugar in the pos in the sauce. Uh, you know, only two Italians would, you know, uh, you know, know about oh, something man. like that. We use ketchup, of course. Everybody uses <laughs> Yum. Uh, Yummy. On a Friday night when you couldn't eat meat, you know. So, uh, uh, so yeah, Dennis, I can't say enough about the guy. He, he put food on my table, and with the acting world, he, he – you know, continually uh, uh, carries the flag, pick the flag up, and, and continue to carry the flag for the fire service. And there's no, I, I can't think of another actor who does that. No. Who does that? You know, they're all, everybody wants to do something, but, you know. And, I, but I it's said it before, uh, never forget is just a slogan unless you do something about it, bro. You know? Yeah. It's a and misconception you, because people think that taxes and everything pay for the fire service, and they don't. No. You, 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 he understands that you can supplement these things right. like, through his foundation and stuff like that. You guys are doing a great job. And I want to mention the uh, Vet Hack. Okay. You have to go to the Vet Hack, vethack.org. Now, they do things like I can't even remember the name of it. Like when a guy's missing a limb and they put on a limb that's automatic, bionics. it's bionics it's they do bionic. for, for, for veterans. The, a part of it I'm involved with is they do ruck marches. So we'll meet at 59th street, 200 veterans from all services, air, you know, Marines, army, Navy, and they get together and it's, it's kind of just fellowship. It's like, Hey, how you doing? Oh, I haven't seen you in a year. Uh, getting a line on, on a job somewhere. Maybe uh, we march up, you know, central park around, we go to somebody's motor pool at some precinct somewhere host us and and it's just a day of guys hanging out together uh uh, uh veterans yeah so that's, that's cool. a great thing yeah and it's no more no less he he does these events and it's always promoting veteran uh 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 employment mm. you know and mm. and making sure guys are hooked in with each other if you get a job through his organization you are obliged then to go and help another veteran who's obliged it forward and and grassroots that's nobody gets cool. nobody's getting any um salary in this uh guns um, make can we put those uh in the uh description in the chat yeah, uh what I, put what, I, what I yeah i can have to, we can do that for sure Ten four. thank Excellent. you 4k Oh. We also have the uh, fire family transport. If you want to touch on that, or the FDM. I don't Foundation. really work with them anymore. <laughs> they call me a couple times, you know, to uh, go to the Bernie Cantor, uh, uh, Cantor Fitzgerald. So they have the big—I forget the name of it. They used they to do, do great it around 9/11. Uh, 
um, and you go up there and you're the celebrity for them. And uh, so I did that. And it was uh, Fire Family Transport is uh, pretty much run by uh, the um, the former football team is the way I looked at it because these guys are like, hey, Joe, you know, you're all like these <laughs> monsters. Uh, uh, but uh, they do great work. I mean, oh, it's, it's unbelievably effective. Mm -hmm. um, another part of the fire service that uh, you don't even consider until you have to consider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get so you're the guy they're picking up, unfortunately. I guys, see them yeah. all over the place, bro. They are all guys over going the place. to treatment. Guys going for, yep. for, you know. So they do tremendously effective work, and you know whatever they asked me to do uh i would do um uh yeah so i told you they they gave me a a crystal like plaque but they forgot to invite me to the dinner to <laughs> oh son of a <laughs> but then the next year when they invited me to the dinner i was telling you i, I won the 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> i remember i think danny prince uh uh picked, yeah, the, prince does he that, picked right? the, the the telephone number out and he goes i was sitting with uh uh, Commissioner Nigro, Joe D, um, Patty Brown's sister, all this table. And he goes, the, uh, the, the name is Burke. And everybody at my table goes, whoa, like this. And Danny or, or, or Patty kind of somebody goes, you're not the only Burke in this room. And he goes, <laughs> he goes 91764. I go, I'm the only one with that fucking phone number. <laughs> and then I said, right away, I go, I, I give it right back to the house. And 10 truckies, like, go read your ticket. And I go, oh, you know, we will not take the money back. <clears throat> so I was like, what am I doing? You know, it was like $8,000. I'm like, what am I doing? And and I think Commissioner Nigro, Nigro was next to me. He goes, boy, I bet you feel like shit. And I was like, I do, you know, I'm like, I don't want this money. So I, I gave it a, to where it did most good. And um, yeah, that was a funny night. Uh, I, I, I go to, it was at Anton's or something, Russo's on the Bay. There's like oh, a man, thousand what? guys there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Russo's, Russo's, Russo's on the Bay. Russo's what is, what the is, is the an Irishman doing to Russo's on Russo's the Bay? Is shit. I was, I, you know, I can't eat eggplant, I'll tell you. But, uh, <laughs> What do you mean? He wants a out. good meal. He wants a good meal. What do you think? Uh, funny story. My wife invited me. My wife is Italian. Her her grandfather worked at a place called Murray's Cheese Shop in Little Italy. Oh my god. My first date, she gives me Forget uh, about it. She gives me eggplant. And I said, Oh, you know what I eat? I start getting red. My throat is closed, and I'm like dying. That night she goes, Would you like some more of the eggplant? I'm yeah, sure. <laughs> my tongue is swollen. I'm like, oh god. And the next day, she, she had me for lunch. This is a God's honest. And the next day, she has me for lunch. She goes, There's a little bit left. The and I said, You know something? I said, I don't know what this shit is. I've never had it in my life, but it's fucking killing me. You know? And, and, and that, was, uh, that was June of, uh, 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 like May of, um, of 1980. 80. Yeah. 40. Put lime in my coffee, Charlie. Wow, he had no his A thing. game on them, bro. He didn't care what he was yeah. gonna happen to him. <laughs> he had the he A all, game on. Yeah, stupid. honey, yeah, give me some more of that. Yeah, <laughs> stupid, I'm stupid. going oh, to respiratory arrest, but give me some more. Anaphylactic shock. <laughs> yeah. he thinks, He's man. still breathing. More. I didn't Still know breathing. what it was. We never had a plan. I can tell Somebody you that. Somebody hit me with the neppy kind of. You know, all I had was, you, you know, you put some meat in the pot to boil the shit out of it. That's what boil it, it, boil it, boil it. Give me the another potato. Top. <laughs> My mother was, oh, she was a wonderful woman. She was like a druid. She was very religious, but no cook. No, no. cook. Yeah. And we had a, you can't have the whole pack. After of every meal, my father would look at us like, you know, <laughs> and we go, Ma, God spare you the help that you should make another meal like this. And we were like, oh, geez. I told my kids last night, we used to stick the, the, the Brussels sprouts in the corner of the table so we wouldn't have to eat them, you know, everything. Was, <laughs> Shit, my sister crazy. said I married my wife just so I had to get a good meal out of it. There you go, bro. Uh, now he's got, the, you know, he's got the meatballs. He's got the <laughs> he's got little, Now he's going like this. Now he's walking. Put, hun, put a little sugar in there. Put a little sugar. Yeah. <laughs> I got a fig tree in my backyard. Don't even talk. <laughs> you son of a bitch tranny. You got a fig tree in your backyard. I'm telling you. That's oh, shit. I got no more use for this guy. All right, Bob, fellas. Awesome job, brother. Great job, Bob. Really, Thank you a lot so of much fun, man. It was, well, it was enjoyable. I was a little nervous. I'm still a little nervous. Uh, I'm always in awe of you guys and, and your commitment, your service. Um, 
you know, so uh, uh, thank you're you. You're not doing too shabby on. yourself. You're there, doing brother. all right there, man. Hey, you know, it's a living. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, not that. What, what, what you're helping, at, what, what you're oh, doing. Yeah, what you're doing to that, give it, back. Like you yeah. said, it's easy to write a check. You, yeah, you, it, you're walking the walk. I always say if, if a dopey actor can do it, there's no excuse. You can do it too, so. <laughs> I say dopey fireman, so there we dopey go. Fireman. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, right. You got any uh, shout-outs, Ruff? No, uh, I'm, no. I'm, I'm <laughs> not Oh, so you're Gonzo, next. what about you, kid? I actually I do. I was going to wish a little happy birthday to my old lady. She's uh, oh, birthdays oh, today. So yeah, happy so birthday! Give her a oh, around no. the room in a little while. Today. I wish uh, her a happy birthday last night. Don't be. Oh well. But I'm boom. But I'm boom. Other than that, I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, you want to play the ending of the show? There. What do you got? Constantly? Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead. Well, uh, actually, does did uh, Bobby have any more shout outs that he have? No, you were good, right? No, I'm, I'm, I'm. He's right sure. all tapped out. We're all tapped out. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, here we go. Let me go ahead and do our outro. Stand by for a few. Well, thank you first and foremost for tuning in to another episode of the Getting Salty Experience. Think we're out of good content? Ha! Far from it. If you want to find us on the audio side, you can do so on all the players. We're available on, yes, I said that correctly, all the players. Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. That's where we are. And if you're here tonight, congratulations. You found us on the Getting Salty Experience, which if you're not already subscribed, please do so. It's free, cost you nothing. You can also like and share, which also costs you nothing and helps us grow the audience of the show. You can also find us on social media if you so please. Of course, we're on Instagram where Lou posts great FDNY content from yesteryear. We're also on TikTok. Tangum is Prime is on top of that. And we're also on LinkedIn too, where yours truly, Mike McBob Cologne, is on top of things on that front. Head on over to gettingsaltyapparel.com, by the way, for all kinds of great merchandise, apparel, and accessories. There is a super chat, too. We thank each and every one of you for your support. You can open up your wallet and donate a amount of your choosing during the program. After all, you guys, yes, you guys are our number one sponsors. Super thanks as well. If you missed the show live, you can show support through that means if you still wish to open up your wallet the super thanks is basically a thank you after the fact for another great episode of ours the facebook fan page is in existence too now over 60,000 strong and continuing to grow it's not created by us at the getting salty experience but it is nevertheless a great way to connect with firefighters from all over and fans of the show alike if you want to advertise with the getting salty experience send your information on over to getting salty ads at gmail.com and if you have any questions or have a guest suggestion please send them to getting salty experience at gmail.com with the necessary contact information and finally if you have content for anything else please send them to coobs podcast at gmail.com of course that's kevin kubler secondary email and that's where you could send things like rig photos firehouse kitchen tables fire videos helmet cam videos tattoos mustache photos and yes photos for the unofficial hot old ladies contest that we may or may not be holding allegedly thanks once again for tuning in to the getting salty experience excellent 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 all right guys also one more shout out we louie and i will be at the new york state chiefs association the 117th annual june 14th through june 17th come on down and see me ruffy and uh bobby burke will be there and marissa hargate oh no they won't be there it'll just be me and ruffy <laughs> he's like this ah, nah, I, didn't nah, 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 I didn't get an invite nah, i didn't get an invite i don't just crash huh? And that Mike Maloney does a very nice job. That's him, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope he was well paid for that. Very he, professional. Whoa, whoa, whoa with the well paid. Hold on, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wiggle. Wiggle. That's all Wiggle. I got. Uh, Mr. Burke, thank you so much. Great, Great job, brother. Brother. Thank you for everything you do for the oh, fire please, service. Give me a break. It's so much appreciated. It really is. Real honor to be here. Uh, more than I can say. All right, Ruffy, you got anything? Right. That's it? That's it, baby. Let's all wrap right, it up. guys. We'll see you on uh, Thursday night. We might have a guy. I think uh, Wolfie's I'm working on, on He's on it. He's working on something. Until then, guys, uh, stay low and go. All right, everybody. We'll see you at the big one. All right, guys. Good night, everyone.